everybody. Welcome NorCal Sports Network. Uh, game two of the Giants-Dodgers goes to the Dodgers, as I called last night. I think it's <laughs> going to be a sweep, guys, but what do you know? We got Ned Coletti joining us live from Southern California. Are you in Southern Cal now? Nick? Yes, I Ned? am. Yes, okay, sir. great. And uh, Larry Kruger will be joining us here uh shortly i believe there he is popping in right now there he is the great one okay, there he is. and uh welcome everybody as uh tonight uh boy logan webb he just uh he's pitched really one good game if you think about it since uh the season started in spring he had a rough spring pitched well opening day and then uh tonight he didn't even get through the fourth inning as he threw 97 pitches and the Dodgers came out hitting them hard, which kind of, you know, Freeman and Betts have pretty good ownage on Logan Webb. And um, you kind of saw this coming, but uh, your thoughts, guys. Welcome, everybody. Well, I, I, first of all, I mean, you know, we can blame Logan Webb or we can credit L.A., right? That's, you know, you know, it's always one or the other. I think this is the one, one of the best one, two, threes I've ever seen. I've been watching the game for, you know, 40 years. Uh, Betts, Otani, Freeman in game one. Game one of the series, those guys went six of 11, three RBIs, six runs scored. And then, you know, Betts right now is just, I mean, it's, I mean Otani's going to heat up, but Freeman and Betts are just ridiculously locked in. And, you know, good luck. I mean, uh, um, just uh, uh, to me, I'm just more impressed by what LA is a you know has at the top of their lineup with Betts and and Otani and Freeman uh, than ripping Logan Webb. I mean, LA came out with a purpose in the first. Their purpose was to see a ton of pitches. They saw 29 of them, and it really set up the game the rest of the night. They've been doing That's- that for a long time. The names may change at the top, but they they've been doing that for a while. They run that first inning. They are patient. They make guys pitch. You know, they every team, even the Dodgers, you, you get to the middle innings of a game and you got to pull your starter out. You're hitting really the, the softest part of a rotation or a part of a staff. And so they work to that end. They want to get in that bullpen in the fourth or the fifth and make, make whatever team they're playing use their 12th, 13th pitcher. And by the time that, that pitcher's out of there, there's another three or four runs up on the board. But – you know, they pay these guys well, and they're getting a lot of production of them. The four hitter, Will Smith, he's over 400 to sign for 140 million. So you got about a million, about a billion, three or four wrapped up in a top four. So you're going to pay for it one way or the other. I mean, that top one through six of the Dodgers is just, gosh, it's. We, Dan, you talked about it yesterday. It's 1927, Murderer's Row. I mean, it's. It's got to be tough for a starter to try to navigate, not just once. Or even, I mean, even twice. I mean, it's just they're so deep, and it's 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 tough. It's tough. You know, I'll give credit to Landon Roop. The guy was able to navigate through some some uh, murky waters there. He he looked pretty good. That curveball is something else. But yeah, Logan Webb. They were uh, Larry. You hit on it. They were taking pitches, and then uh, when they got the pitch they wanted, they capitalized, and, and we saw it. Yeah, I, I, I've watched Webb enough to know that I think the thing you have to do is lay off the uh, the uh, the change up a lot, and when it's the off speed stuff, just wait for the straighter stuff coming across the plate, and because uh, he throws most of those things down below the strike zone, and the Dodgers know that, and they 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 do this, they 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 scout, they have great advanced scouting because. They did this to Anthony DiScofani a couple years ago in 21. They scored. They put up like 10 runs on him in the first inning because they watched him and they saw his his tendencies and his patterns. Um, I I think this Dodger team, when I look at it, it seems different to me this year. Um, almost like it, it reminds me of the the 2016 Warriors that had Kevin Durant that just kind of knew they were. They're there just to win a title, and I don't see this team messing around this year. If uh, if they don't make it this year, I mean, anything can happen, injuries, all that kind of stuff, but this team seems has, has a focus, Like, and I think Otani helps bring that. 
he brings this kind of just he's like a curry in a way he's quiet but he's a quiet assassin this guy is means business you can tell he he just he's not there to you know he's gonna have a good time but he's he's there to you know between the lines these guys are just coming out and they're just taking no prisoners i don't see anybody but maybe the braves touching this team you know the one thing that jumped out to me about logan webb is his focus tonight i mean um freddie freeman stole second base standing up in this game um you know and and maybe that's just a brief loss of focus but i thought that was you know that was kind of an odd odd thing you don't normally see and then, you know, L.A. went with the bullpen game, and I don't know what their record is in bullpen games, but I think it's pretty good. Um, and they, not only did they get one inning out of, you know, they got one inning out of Brazier, but then they went to their, their I guess, their starter, Yarborough. And even though he gave up seven hits and four runs, I mean, he, you know, he's a different look. He's a dramatically different look. He's a lefty, and, and uh, you know, and, and it's a different-looking lefty. I was really impressed by uh, Grove with that slider and and Phillips at the end is just truly nasty. So I mean LA's going to I mean it's a weird I you know Ned I was thinking about about uh you know different things we could talk about on this show. One of the things that really jumped out guys was just I mean LA wins 100 games every year. And yet they're getting flushed in the playoffs more times than not. And I wonder what that feeling is like as you're just rampaging through the league, knowing that you're ultimately going to be judged on, do you get out of the, you know, division round or whatever in the first round? And, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the key is. I don't know. Ned, if you were an executive on the, on the Dodgers right now, you know, a team that annually wins, you know, a hundred plus, but also has gotten beat in the first round. What is the message that, that, uh, so you don't put too much pressure on that first round so that you don't, you know, kind of miss the forest through the trees, sort of, a, sort of, a, so to speak, what do you, what would you say to your team if they were this team with all this talent, but they keep kind of falling apart in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah. They've, they've lost their last six playoff games. Three to San Diego after winning game one two years ago, and last year swept by Arizona without leading in an in for an inning. Um, it's it's a tough dynamic because the thing that I I always wonder about with this team is when you play that long and you may have I've seen seasons where they had ten games that they had a really competitive team playing against them. Most of the teams that they play against can't compete. Most of the teams that, you know, and to your point, Larry, at the outset of the show, you know, instead of getting on Logan Webb, I mean, you know, let's let's call it like it is. I'm with the Dodgers. I mean, how good they are. So they play six months, and I, I don't know if they know how good they need to be to win it. I think you get you can get a little bit lulled into a certain level of play. Because that's what your expectation is. I don't know, except for Atlanta, who's going to challenge them this year in a series. Maybe Philly. I don't know if any NL West team is going to challenge them. Maybe Arizona a little bit. You know, I'm not big on San Diego. Giants are, you know, trying to be a 500 club or maybe a a touch better. Um, Central, I don't know anybody there that's going to give them a rough ride. Maybe Cincinnati in their home ballpark. So as you add it all up, American League, you got Baltimore, you got a few teams. So maybe more than 10. But it's not, it's not 30. It's not mm-hmm. like a, a sixth of the season. It's not going to be that. So as I as I look at it, I've I've always, even when I was doing TV, I would I would look forward to three good starting pitchers coming in to face the team. Or them going on the road and having to face three guys who can, who can pitch. Because when you get to October, by and large, that's what you're seeing. And if you're not ready for that, if you've lowered your game to the competition, to just beat the competition, when the lights get hot, almost everybody can do a little bit more than they've been doing earlier. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a – I think you nailed it, Ned, with the uh, the teams. I, I do think 
the, the West is the Dodgers, and they'll win it by 10 plus. And oh, they'll uh, win it by maybe by more than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could they have win it by Labor Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? They seriously could. Yeah. They seriously could. They, they, they will. This will be, this is a historic team. And the thing about them is whatever they need at the deadline, they'll just go get. So well, no, they're uh, going to get Walker Bueller back. I mean, he may be as good as anybody they got out there. Right. Well, yeah, that was how, that was my question. Like, who would start in the playoffs? It would it would it be if you're game one? You got Glasnow. You go Bueller. You go Yamamoto. There's Kershaw. I mean, Paxton. What that to me? It's like if there's one thing. If if I was if I ran that show in L.A., I'd be like, man, I want to find one just money starting pitcher. Now I know Yamamoto's awesome looking. I wanted him bad on the Giants. And Glasnow, if you catch him on the right day, looks as good as dominant as almost any pitcher that ever, you know, that's that's going in the league right now. He just doesn't can't put it together over long periods of time. But I'd want that one, you know, hired gun, whatever you want to call, whatever you know, whatever you want to, you know, the guy who he may not be one of the ten best pitchers in baseball, but in October he absolutely always is one of the ten best pitchers. In, in baseball, and I'd want to find that one guy if I was L.A. Well, that uh, one guy is sitting there, Walker Bueller. Yeah. You know, we've, we've forgotten a little bit about his resume, but in the last decade or so, I don't know that there's anybody pitching that I would take ahead of Walker Bueller. The kid is fierce. He's a competitor. Fire He's competitor. Isn't he? stuff. The bigger the game, the better he is. Now he's he's coming back from a second Tommy John. And then if you remember last year in September, they talked about him coming back. Mm -hmm. They may have just been a bluff because he's not ready quite yet. But see, in this, you know, th that's the guy for me. But the other ones are, are exceptional just uh, as well. Who's got three to match up to that? Uh, going back to one other thing from the first couple of, of comments we've, we've had, what they do better than anybody is exert patience because they know they can. They know they can wait on Walker Bueller. It's not like they got to rush him back. They know they can wait on Clayton. They can wait. They can wait on young players. They can wait on developing people. They can wait longer than anybody because they're better than everybody. So they're, they are, I don't know, I've ever seen them in a rush to bring somebody back or in a rush to make a decision on a young player. I think, I think their patience and their ability to wait things out is a huge asset for them. And Bobby Miller. Yes. Bobby Miller is, is not there quite yet, but he's got all the characteristics of a guy that could do it. We'll have to put him behind everybody else right now, but kid's strong. Good stuff, but also strong character. Ned, did um, are the Dodgers just being cautious and slow paying, slow playing Walker Bueller, or did he have any kind of a setback? And I don't know that he's had a setback, but they don't they don't have a rush. What would right. what would their rush be if it's going to take him? Uh, he made a start the other night. I think he's got three more to go. You know what? What's the hurry? Yeah, I mean, really, who's going to challenge? Who's gonna challenge? Yeah. No, you might as well. Plus, yeah. you so, might you know, as well play the long game. Play the long game and, down, and down, have more innings. Competition, as I said earlier. Yeah, have more innings to to go it when he, when they really need them. You know. Well, you know, Dan. You don't. I heard an inter interesting set on KMBR. The first eight games, the Dodgers have scored five runs or more. First time this has been done in twenty years. So you you're you're taking all the pressure off the pitching staff when you score exactly. five runs. I mean, yeah. it's it's incredible. Yeah, well, what did I say last night? I said the Giants to win tonight, with even with Webb going, they're going to have to score at least five because the yep. Dodgers are going to score their runs. Yep. And you know, the the Giants ha and tomorrow they got they're facing Glass now. They're missing Yamamoto because I think I think the Dodgers are doing it wise. They're Yamamoto's used to pitching on five full days rest instead of. Uh, or or six, yep. he pitches every sixth yep. day. We're going to be able to use him appropriately too. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. 
you know, it's uh, it's a juggernaut that uh, I mean, that lineup with just it's I mean, you're down the first inning almost uh, immediately before you take your seat. They strike it, early. Yeah. I mean, look they at the top of the early. lineup. Look at the top of that lineup. Betts, Otani, Freeman. I mean, that's an amazing one, two, three. Um, Freeman, you know, had a huge night tonight. He's rocketing shots all over the place. Otani hasn't even really gotten it rolling yet. Wait until he gets it rolling. Um, I, I, on the giant note, though, man, it was nice to see Landon Roop tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Ned, I don't know what you thought of him, but, man, I mean, um, you know, obviously Bo, uh, Bo Mel came out and yanked him against Otani after he struck out the previous hitter. And I'm sitting there going, oh, man, I would love to have seen him against Otani. Of course, it was the lefty-lefty deal and Otani grounded out on the next pitch and Bowmel showed what he knew there but man Landon Roop um this guy 94 95 two innings struck out four I mean he's got one of the tightest curveballs I mean that's a phenomenal curveball he he struck out bets I mean, I mean we're talking about the best player in the game right now Mookie Betts has got a 600 on base or whatever and he just made him look foolish on that last that last one where he just buckled it right at the hands and bets like almost tipped his cap and just walked back to the dugout. That Roop looks special. He looks really nice. I think, you know, if you, if, if you could be do a magic act and take the Dodgers out of the West and put one of the central teams in the West, I don't think the giants are that far off from, from having a shot to play, you know, meaningful games into the month of September. I just think the Dodgers shift everything with everybody. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I don't know that San Diego's better than San Francisco. Yeah. It's Arizona's it's, coming off their big year. Can they match that? Mm -hmm. You know, Giants have done some good things the last month before the, uh, before the season. Yeah. Farhan had a really good off season. He did. I mean, he, he put together, you know, a team that I think it still lacks a, uh, a little bit in the middle of the bullpen, and I think it lacks another bat, uh, a big bat. But uh, the bullpen should straighten itself out as Cobb and um, Snell come in. It could push Jordan Hicks to the bullpen. When you get Robbie Ray the second half, it, it could, uh, you know, create a much stronger bullpen by moving Keaton Wynn to the bullpen. And, and then you have, cause, cause their problem is, is they, they, they've pitched three or four guys that have made their debuts in the first five games. You had uh, Miller, Kaiwei Tang and Avila all pitch yep. their first three major league appearances. And uh, they did okay. A little bit, some of them first outing. Okay. But then they kind of showed their, their uh, lack of experience and uh, you know, you're going to need some guys that can lock it down because if they go, to, I mean, giants have, <laughs> they're using their pin quite a bit in the first six games and you don't want to get too behind the eight ball no. by burning out your pitching staff. So, um, but I, I overall, I mean, it, it's going to be a, an interesting year because, you know, baseball is a long season, 162. I mean, you rarely say, <laughs> I mean, we're already uh, crowning the Dodgers, which anything can happen, but you rarely, you rarely look at a team this early and say, I mean, the division should be theirs in a double digit digit games, but, uh, and everybody else is playing for, you know, it should be the Braves and the Dodgers locking up two spots. So you got the rest of the league playing for four spots. And uh, Phillies probably should be just about an automatic. So now you're down to three teams, and one of them is going to come from the Central. And uh, that's an interesting division to me this year because I kind of, when I did my projections, I liked Cincinnati in that division. And I, and I said, I think Pittsburgh's going to be an up and coming team. And they're starting to show it with uh, some of their guys that they've added and. O'Neill Cruz is back and healthy. Um, that should be a fun, fun yeah. division to watch. They're getting better. You got a new catcher, too. Yeah, Joey yeah. Bart. Joey, Joey Bart. Bart. Shipped out. Saves uh, yep. last number one pick. Shown the door. Um, 
what do you guys think about as far as April? Because I mean, you know, this is a grind sport. You know, people. I heard somebody say that Dave Rigetti used to say something like, "Hey, you know, I really, I think it was Flan on the broadcast yesterday on the uh, post game say that, um, you know, he kind of liked it once everybody kind of settled in, once you were into kind of your rhythm, or that Sabe said that to him, um, you know." You know, as far as hot starts, Yankees are five and one. Detroit's four and zero. Oh, Pittsburgh's five and zero. Oh, Milwaukee's four and zero. Oh. Um, and then there's some teams that are off to really cold starts. White Sox are one and four. Houston's got got the Ronell Blanco no hitter. Otherwise, they're zero oh and five. Um, Mets are zero oh and four. Miami's zero oh and six. Colorado's one and five. Ned and, and and guys, what do you what do you guys think as far as? Um, as far as when do you kind of you can't win the division in April, but man, you sure as hell can lose it if you just fall out of it. Is there any year, Ned, that you can think of where you thought, man, I can't believe this slow start. I can't believe we're off to this kind of a start. Yeah, we we I've been through a few of those, but I would make a habit of, you know, when we get to May, we'll see where we're at. We'll see how he settled in as, as uh, you talk about Rags's comment. Um, I think you have to let that happen. Guys get ready at different at a different pace. Some guys are habitually slow starters. And I think you've got to let it play out a little bit. Yeah, you can't fall eight or ten back, although I've been on teams that have and still won, because it is that long a season. But I think you gotta I think you gotta let it you gotta let it go for a little while. Otherwise, you start making decisions that you wish you didn't make because it is a game. It's a long, long road. And if you make a decision based on a week or two, uh, you're probably going to get burnt with that call. But I, I would wait. I would always wait. And you learn every day. You, you pick up information every day. And But, you know, I got to let them go 25 games or so before I know really what we've got. To some extent, it's like the first crossroads for me. There'll be another 50 between then and the end, but that's like the first one that tells me kind of where we're at. You know, it's it's also weird watching. Every time you watch these games from L.A., I always notice Mary Hart sitting behind home plate. Oh, yep. yeah. You know, sitting there, uh, and she's married to some Hollywood bigwig, and I forget his name. But I remember going to uh, Dodger Stadium years ago, and I'm up in the press box and Squiggy from Lenny and Squiggy from uh, yes. Laverne and Shirley <laughs> was a big Dodger something. I don't know. He was in the press box. Um, what was it like being the GM down there? I mean, it wasn't like you were the GM in the 60s with with uh, Sinatra and, uh, you know, all these, you know. But I mean, there were plenty of stars from Magic on down down there on a regular basis. Is it a different vibe when you've got kind of the Hollywood crew all sitting right there in the infield? I think the, the whole environment is a different vibe. Um, you're talking about typically 50,000 people, sometimes more than that. Um, it's an event. And I think, you know, you, you would never be surprised by, you know, who you'd run into, so to speak. And I wasn't, uh, uh, I'm still not a real big uh, Hollywood person, knowing people, knowing actors, actors, uh, musicians, things like that. You know, I got a small group that I would recognize, but I was introduced to all kinds of people. And I said, Oh, really? You know, Hey, nice to meet you. You know, I was, uh, I, I never had the time to really uh, get deeply involved in it, but uh, you know, I had an, an embarrassing situation a little bit, not at the time with Will Farrell. We played St. Louis in a LCS, uh, a game five and 13 afternoon game, uh, flying to St. Louis after the game. Uh, I get down and I get into the elevator. It's just me. And the, the guard opens it up and he says, uh, I got uh, somebody who wants to you know, ride down with you. And, and they're cool. I said, that, that's fine. And it was Will Ferrell, except I don't know it was Will Ferrell. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I, 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 candidly, you know, my mistake. I didn't know Will Ferrell. And I get down to the dugout club to, to meet some friends and family. And the door opens, and I'm talking to Will the entire ride down. And the, the, they all go, you were on the elevator with Will Ferrell. And I said, <laughs> well, who's Will Ferrell, you know? 
and you know it didn't take me long to be embarrassed by that but you know i you know i i, I wasn't i didn't have the time nor the nor the background to come into that type of situation and be taken by any of it you know i met people that was cool you know met al pacino three or four times he i knew immediately you know and <laughs> a few other people but you know i made my mistakes not knowing who people were you know but it is a different vibe there's nothing like it in baseball there's I mean, no doubt seriously seriously would new york be similar or not not quite? really no nope. well larry don't you have a will ferrell story too uh <laughs> I met do have him. a Will Ferrell story. I was I was uh, doing uh, a 9 a.m. show at with Gary Radnich, and he had been on with Murph and Mac, and he was in the green room at KMBR, and um, he was facing the other way. And um, I walked into the green room as I do, like about you know 8:30 or so, half hour before the show, and I I didn't recognize him because he wasn't facing me. And I said, "Hey, what's going on, bro?" He's like, hey, what's up, bro? Hey, man. Hey, bro. Hey. He's like, starts kind of making fun of me, saying that, you know, calling him bro. And then I'm like, who the hell is this intern in the freaking thing talking trash to me? So I go back there. I'm like, I'm like, oh, you don't like being called bro? And he whips around and it's Will Ferrell. And I'm like, literally, my wife and I, the two nights before, I'd watch Semi Pro. And you know, like when you watch a movie and the character's so damn good that you get enthralled by the character. Yep. I said to him, I go, Jackie Moon, it's Jackie Moon. And he goes into like a three minute back and forth, you know, and now for your Flint Tropics, you know, your power forward, your your you know, and your owner. And and he just starts going into it and what a cool guy. What a cool down to earth guy. And we just start talking about some of his favorite movies. And I talk, start talking to him about semi pro and how much I enjoyed it. Just a real down to earth, regular guy. I mean, he's, he's a real easy guy to talk to. Some of these Hollywood people have big, you know, Hey, big egos. Will Ferrell's kind of like a man of the people. I hope I get a chance to meet him again and apologize <laughs> for my lack of, cause, cause he wanted to talk about the game. He said, you know, this ride ain't going to be long enough. I got so many questions for you. And I says, Hey, well, you know, call my office sometime because you know, I, I got to get going here, pal. You know, you know I, I hope I awesome. get a chance to meet him sometime. And, <laughs> Larry, you got a, you got a question there from Chase Broberg. Chase Broberg. Sounds like an interesting uh, guy. Chase Broberg. Who's been ripping me in the chat saying, I don't know ball. Oh, really? Chase, okay. I, Chase, I think I've forgotten more ball than you'll ever know. But he, <laughs> I, my thoughts on Conforto and uh, Jung Hoo Lee. I mean, Jung Hoo Lee has a presence about him for sure. I like the way he plays center field as far as um, he seems like he gets good, good jumps. I have not seen a lot of false steps. Um, and he seems very confident. Now, he just won the MVP of his league. Let's see if he looks confident in six weeks. You know, that would be my question. My whole question, and there's lots of people who are banging on me because Jung Hoo Lee had a good first week and I was skeptical. I'm only skeptical because they paid him $113 million, $19 million a year. The Is Giants, <laughs> well, the Giants and Farhan are giving Jung Hoo Lee what the Astros are paying Jordan Alvarez. So yeah, that is a lot. And <laughs> and the Giants are paying Jung Hoo Lee with the Diamondbacks are paying Corbin Carroll. So you know what? The ex expectations are that he's going to be really, really good. I'll say that his this though, his bat to ball skills really strong. Um he knows the zone. I mean he you can put it right off the corner and he doesn't flinch. Uh he's got a great strike zone. I just don't know that he's going to hit, and um, I hope he does. To me, if you pay a guy that kind of that kind of cake, you he's got to hit you two eighty five, two ninety. I asked Marty what he thought he would hit. He said two fifty five. If he oh. hits two fifty five, that's going to be a that's going to be a, a bad deal. But I also would say this: just the same way, I wouldn't get super negative on a guy who struggled in the first week to ten days. I wouldn't get super positive on a guy who kicked butt in the first 10 to uh, 10 days because I've met all these, these advanced scouts 
and they're really, really, really good. And they pick up unbelievable little nuances in your game and they find out what you don't like. And then six weeks in, guess what you're getting? A steady diet of what you don't like night after night after night after night. So I'm impressed by Jung Hu, but I'm kind of crossing my fingers and hoping it's for real. For Conforto, uh, I, I really love the way the ball's coming off of Conforto's bat. Um, you know, he's had injuries. He's had injuries that have cost him an entire year. To me, if the Giants have, you know, every team coming out of Springs got a route to 70 wins and a route to 90 wins. Not every team, but most teams. Um, the Giants have a route to 90 wins, too. And part of that route is Conforto's got to bounce back with a big year. When I'm saying big, I'm saying 270 plus with power, uh, RBI potential, being healthy. But so far, so good. I, I love the way Conforto, I love the way the ball looks coming off Conforto's bat right now. To me, he looks better so far this year than I saw him at any point last year. What do you guys yeah. think of Lee and Conforto? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I'm, I'm with you. I agree with uh, your assessment of Conforto. I think uh, I kind of expected him to have a better year just because he didn't have to spend the offseason rehabbing. Right. He was able to be healthy and, and, you know, it's his first healthy year in a couple of years. Yeah. So that makes a huge difference when you're just rehabbing, you're not even working on your craft. You're just trying to get your, you know, shoulder in, in so you can work on your craft. So I think the fact that he was healthy makes a huge difference. Um, it's also a contract year. Those are always seem to get Pretty guys. Good incentive. To, yeah. Always seem guys <laughs> to produce. We're seeing Juan Soto. Get off to a great start. Surprise, surprise. Um, yeah, so the other thing with Jung Hu Lee, I am impressed with his overall approach at the plate. He looks to me like he can make adjustments quickly. He did even tonight, you know. He took uh, – I think he struck out once. I think it was his second strikeout of the season. He doesn't his second take, one. Too. Yeah, that yeah, was – he was caught looking, yeah. Yeah. Did he strike out twice tonight? Yes, Twice. Okay. Yeah, so he yeah. struck out twice. That's right. So struck that's out in the first, struck out in the seventh. So he, he struck out th three times, but in the ninth, he hit a sharp single to right. Um, so I think he's a guy that is going to put the, you know, bat on the ball. And he, he's, I think he can hit. I think if he hits anywhere north of 275 in his first year, that's incredible for, you know, coming he's over to the big leagues. Yeah. Um, but I think the future looks bright for him. I think the kid will figure it out. He's 25. I think he's got 300 uh, plus potential in, in his in his game. So um, and then we got a, a donation. I think this is on your channel, right, Larry? Is this is that yours? I don't even know whose is whose. Who's it? What's it? Which one? This Nick? one. This Nick? one up. Yeah. Is that coming from you, Larry? Or probably is. Uh, you know what? I'm not really sure, I'm but you sure. know what? <laughs> we're, we're running a simulcast here, guys. So we're running the simulcast. Guys, and we're going to do this a few times this year. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get, be able to get Ned on as well and, and talk a lot of ball because, uh, you know, the one thing I would love to do is help Danny build up his channel. I think Danny's got the best baseball channel there is, uh, as far as giants baseball. And I would love to see it just dominate by the end of the summer. So if you're one of my, you know, thousands of subs over there and you haven't subbed to NorCal sports network, give Danny a follow him and Eric do outstanding giant stuff outstanding, and not just giant stuff, Niner stuff, warrior stuff, other stuff, but uh, they're going to do a lot of giant stuff this year. And um, I'd love for every guy, everybody who subs subs to my channel to sub to theirs and, and let's uh, let's help get Danny to, you know, 20,000 subs and, and get this thing really cooking for Danny. There you go. Yeah, you've Thanks. been doing this Thanks, for a sir. while. How many how many shows have you done, Dan? Gosh, we've done every post game last year, and we just did everything off season. Kind of started up in uh, right after. You know, we're when, approaching four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred shows. Eric, to you, Danny. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Just the fact that you did every game last year, you should get like a. <laughs> Quad a candlestick or something. I mean, yeah, one of those. Uh, something. <laughs> Jesus, you did every, How about that stuff? I oh, did yeah. every post game for the 2022 <laughs> Giants. It's like, oh you know, man, oh, yeah, man. last year was hard, but we, we, yeah, uh, it, it turned into some comedy 
And I think I ended up on the no, I think I ended up on baseball's no flight list for media credentials. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll come on with you once every you know, seven to 10 days if you want. You know? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'd if love draw it. You some, draw you some folks. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That'd Ned. be great. You know, one one thing that I thought was interesting today that I read online, I, I'm not sure if it was ESPN or, or where, but they are, maybe it was Bleacher Report. They had an article about Major League Baseball trade ships. And I was just looking at the list and going, who on this list could fit the Giants? The names I came up with were Dylan Carlson under club control with the Cardinals through 2026. If they need an outfielder, he would be nice. He's an Elk Grove kid. Uh, Mark Canna, just from the connection with Melvin. Uh, and also he went to Bellarmine High School. Paul Blackburn from the A's, once again, the A's connection. Um, and then Willie Adamas, if they, you know, if they decide at some point that he'll be a Luciano, Dodger. You think so? <laughs> I mean, Willie Adamas, uh, you know, it would be it would be nice if if, if somehow uh, Luciano is not in their plans. Hassan Kim, because of the relationship with Jung. Huli, but the guy out there that to me is like kind of like the creme de la creme, like that would be the guy that would make the fans go, whoa, is Pete Alonzo. Hmm. And if, if the Mets are going to move Pete Alonzo, and I realize the Giants love their L Lamont Wade, Wilmer Flores platoon at first, and it's 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 suitable. It's fine, right? I mean, Come they're on, both it's Alonzo. You can't go. It's yeah, Alonzo. I mean it's but it's that Pete Alonso and Alonso. Yes. Yeah, that, that and also, I mean, you know, you got Solaire, you saw him run into one tonight. He's gonna run into 35 more this year, right? But man, if you have a guy like a Pete Alonzo, um he makes everybody better in that lineup. He mm. makes everybody better, he takes attention off of everybody. He is he there's little kids rolling around every little uh area of, of of uh, Northern California wearing Pete Alonzo jerseys and, and uh, he, I just think he's got the personality, the bat, the makeup, the, you know, everything to just be the giants next, whatever. And he's, uh, he's going to be available in a few months. Cause the Mets are going nowhere with that pitching. Yeah. Staff. So, I mean, that's the thing. Maybe you save up a couple of your Luciano's and your, this is, and your that's, and you, you put them all in one deal, try to go for a Pete Alonzo because, um, to me, if you you know if you could get a player like that, man, that would change the dynamic, I think. And 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 as Ned said, I I don't think the Giants, you know, baseball is funny. The Giants looked really really far away in March on March first, like a month ago, but then they get Chapman, and then they get Snell, you know what I'm saying? Then they, they all of a sudden they go to spring training and Landon Roop kind of pops up, and suddenly you're looking up and you're like, you know what? They're not that far away. And we all, you know, every Giants fan knows. We know this very, very well. The same way L.A. can win 106 games, get bounced in the first round, the Giants have gotten into the squeezed in in the wild card, didn't even win 90, and went on and won the World Series. So it's baseball, man. The Diamondbacks did it, you know, had an incredible run last year until Boach and the Rangers shut them down. You know, I think that if you're a Giants fan, as sad as it is, LA's got such firepower at this point. You got to kind of think like that. Like, they're going to win their 106. Okay, can you get to 88, get in, and... Now let that get, pitching staff roll. Right, and get hot. Or maybe, maybe, maybe you, uh, you know, maybe Farhan can trade for the hot reliever. You know, uh, we saw that with K Rod Ned in 2002. You're all too familiar with that. Yeah. You guys kind of ran into an angel team that had discovered the hot reliever, and they were hard to get off the oh, field. Was that Rodriguez? Was that Rodriguez rookie year? K Rod, yeah, yeah, he came up in September. Yeah, how am I? You know what? That what you just said is very interesting because if they can get in, and they got a healthy Snell and Ray. And Webb. And if the Dodgers were one of the three guys we were talking about, if something happens to one of those three, or who knows what's going to happen? You know, Glasnow's been terrific, but he hasn't pitched that many innings mm -hmm. at any point in time. You know, you, you've got you've got the makings of something that could be interesting, because I mean, let's let's dream on it for a minute. 
where's the pressure going to be? It's going to be on if LA. You've got 106, 110 wins versus 88 wins in that oh, yeah. rivalry. It's all on, all on LA. With left handed starting pitching, and two of the top three guys are both left handed for yeah. LA. So, I mean, it's a million miles away right now, and a bunch of good things have got to happen for one organization and a and a, a couple of mediocre things have got to happen to a, a star studded organization. But hey, that's how that's how stories are written and that's how things can happen. That's well, what I, I think I, the yeah. idea has been all the way through for the way Farhan's handled this is is to, to play the long game, get better as the season goes on, and just get in. Because if you took, get in, you may have enough starting pitching to go a little bit deeper. And some of those guys starting now, as, as we've we've talked about half hour ago, they will move into the pen. Right. <laughs> yep. And so you, you got the makings of something that should get better as the season goes on. You it got Webb, Snell, and maybe a, a, a rejuvenated, healthy Robbie Ray. You never know. Yeah, not bad. I'll say and, this: and, the, 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 If you said what is the most positive thing that we've seen all week from the Giants, to me, it's Jordan Hicks and that third pitch that he mm. he's discovered. I don't. What is that pitch, Danny? Is that a is that a split? Yeah, split. It's a split. Yeah, it's a nasty, nasty split. Very Nick, nasty. Jordan Hicks with this split throwing throwing a hundred. I mean, and he's and he's not at a hundred as a starter, so he's more like high nineties. But still, high nineties, and he's got multiple pitches. Now he's added this third pitch, the splitter, which he kind of taught himself this spring. He looks really good. Yeah. Like he can, he can, he can kind of do what some of these Dodger pitchers can do sometimes, and that's just the uh, you know pour it right in the zone with great stuff and the movement and the. I mean, he's nasty. So, you know, if Hicks becomes either a dominating five inning starter, which that could happen, or if he becomes like the league's best eighth inning guy, I mean, you got Doval in the ninth. I mean, if you could go Hicks Doval you're and play a seven inning game. Yeah, this is this is not, been, not crazy. It's been my strategy and what I've thought of, and I think Farhan has got it. I really do. Well, it's a I good think, thing he's listening to your show. He's it is. It really page. is. Three hundred of the four. I mean, we, we we pointed it all out for him early on. We gave him the we gave him the blueprint. No, I I, I really think, think been, I think it's been pretty interesting what's going down. I think he I think he made the right moves with you know moving off of Hanniger and Discofani, getting Ray, um, adding uh, obviously Snell Chapman on a short term deal. I was hoping it wasn't going to be a long term deal, and it wasn't. So, um, but I think. What you said, Ned, about getting into the playoffs is so true because we saw it last year. We saw it with the Giants when they won some world championships. They just got in and then they got hot. Um, if you get that pitching staff going at the end of the year, and you know what? Who might be the X factor we haven't even talked about? Tomorrow night's going to tell us a lot where Kyle Harrison is. Kyle Harrison. Because he's going up against the Dodgers' murderers row. And we're going to get to see what this young kid's got because he pitched really well his uh, first outing. He went six innings in uh, San Diego. And how many pitches was it, Eric? Like 80? 80 81? somewhere on there. Which is very – his probably his most efficient start of his entire pro Perfect. career because – he hasn't gone past four innings generally. He was going maybe four, getting into the fifth, and they were stopping him at 80, 85 pitches max last year. So the fact that he got through six, if he can get through five tomorrow night and hold the Dodgers to three runs, I mean, that's that's probably a pretty good start. Uh, the other the other uh, great happening that nobody really noticed this week, guys, was that Carson Wisenhunt in his first start in AAA went three innings and struck out six. And when I talked to Farhan about him on the radio last summer, uh, I said, "What what stands out to you about Wisenhunt?" And he's like, "He's got the Bugs Bunny changeup." Mm -hmm. And Ned, if you watch this kid, I mean, it's a, it's really s spectacular to watch because he's got 
you know, pretty lively fastball, mid nineties fastball. And it threw the exact same arm slot. Mm. He's got this back it up change up. That is, I mean, it's dirty. I mean, it's just like, it's like if the guy doesn't throw anything else except that fastball and that change up from those, from the same arm angle, he, you, you'd have a hard time hitting him. Um, just the, the way he can, and, and the, 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 ch- the difference in speed, his fastball is 95, his changeup's like 81, 82, something like that. I mean, he's pulling the pulling the play. string. Yeah, he's pulling the string. By the way, I should read this so Danny can get it off the screen. Nick says, Conforto is the best hitter in the in the organization from a scouting perspective. Bat speed, barrel control, 4-5 win player with the Mets before the injury. Now he's going to Shanahan, I believe. He says, Shanahan needs to go to scouting school, Ned. Can you help him with that? <laughs> Can you, uh, Ned, the draft's coming up. Can you help Kyle Shanahan? Uh, all he's done is taken the Niners to the Super Bowl this year. He obviously yeah, doesn't know I, what he's doing. Uh, yeah. Well, well, you, know, what? I, you know, I played with, I played uh, baseball with his dad. We were on city championship teams together. That's right. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah. In fact, the team, as ironic as it was, the team picture shows us sitting next to each other. Mike, Mike Shanahan, the coach oh, yeah. of the Broncos. Wow. He, he went to, uh, was it Eastern? Went to Eastern Illinois, yeah. yeah. But I mean, we went to East Leiden High School together, a couple years older than me. But we played on city championship teams together. Wow! I played. Wow. I played center field and second base, and he caught. Wow! And, uh, and all these years later, we ended up working I, in pro sports. That's cool. Have you well, ever talked to him in the last 10, yeah. 15 years? Yeah, often on here and there. Not not very often. Um, you know, the the football coach at our high school just passed away last year, so that was a. Uh, a sad time for all of us uh, and Mike and, and he were, were very, very close, but uh, mm. I have a tremendous amount of respect for that family. And it, it's kind of cool seeing a guy you you played with and, and teammates of, and all of that, seeing his son do what Kyle has done. So I'm not going to teach Kyle anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We, we can all keep learning. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan has done tremendous work and, um, I actually went to a couple Niner games this past year. Did you? Oh, I was up in San Jose doing the, the Sharks uh, gig, and we had a Sunday off. Um, Bengals? It wasn't play. Bengals, was it? No, early in the season, uh, late September. Uh, Cardinals, maybe? Cardinals? Yes. Yes. And it was it was my first game in the, in the stadium. Well, my first Niner game. Went to the Super Bowl there. And I was uh, – I was reminded of the passion of the fan base. Mm, you know, yeah. And I was, you know, I was a candlestick many times uh, working in San Francisco when the Niners played. And that was always, always an interesting, interesting day. Wow. But this was really, really something. I mean, the excitement, the buzz in that building is crazy. Yeah. They love that team. What was the loudest you, you heard it this year? Was it the uh, Detroit game? Larry, when they came back in the NFC Championship, or was it the? Um, yeah, definitely the 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 clinching the score when McCaffrey went in to give the Niners the lead at the end of the Detroit game. It was just it was you know we're sitting in the press box behind like two and a half inches of glass. It's really hard to to get that stadium feel, but man, the place just started to rock. Wow, uh, and really shook. Yeah, that it was, was that was. Uh, it's it was exciting. A, it's an exciting it adventure. There, it really is. Really is cool. I'll and tell you what's CF, fun. The CFO was a Dodger CFO, Peter Wilhelm. So yes. I had a chance to visit with him. I mean, you know, we go back through uh, the Frank McCourt era, and uh, Peter and I would always have money discussions, and I'd always come in there begging for another nickel, and and we'd just laugh, and we had a great time, and. It's great to see him and uh, wow! There's a connection between the Bay Area teams and the uh, and the uh, L.A. Uh, do, isn't oh, yeah. uh, Golden State Peter Goober? Isn't he with the oh, Dodgers yeah. too? Yeah, Peter yeah. Goober he was, is. A, 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 I have much respect for him. Of all the ownership I've been around, has been I've been around quite a few. Um, I don't think I was ever around anybody so successful who has more curiosity, not in a bad way, in a great way. Than Peter does. Peter, every time uh, I see him, he say, "Hey, you got 15 minutes? I got to ask you something." And it was like really good stuff. Yeah. And you know, not no, never a second guess or stuff like that. Just a curiosity on different mm-hmm. things. And his success in business 
in Hollywood and also with, with the with the Warriors and the Dodgers. Uh, you know, profound success yeah. there. Wow. How, Will Martinez that? here brings up Sinjo. Yeah. When's the last time anybody brought up Sinjo on the on this show? Oh, Will Martinez. God. We should Didn't be giving he... you four ninety nine for bringing up Sinjo. <laughs> I, I don't call him Shinjo. I call him World Series DH. That's what I call oh, him. That's what you call him? Okay. Yeah, World Series DH. Yeah. No, but uh, J uh, Jung Hoo Lee already better than Shinjo ever was, so that's a plus. Ned, do you think it's possible owners colluded against Scott Boris? Uh, this I don't offseason. think they colluded. I just think that with the TV deal with Bally's being up in the air and some teams not knowing what your mm. revenue is going to be. Mm. I think that's part of the factor. And, you know, look, look through the history, you know, a lot of, a lot of teams have gotten, regardless of who the agent is, sometimes get 50 cents on the dollar. Uh -oh. so Somebody's angry at Larry. You, you get tired of getting, getting beat like that. This is the same man, Chase Broberg. <laughs> Chase, he's, Chase, Chase is chasing you down, man. Chase says, I've been angry with how you've tweeted about Jung Hoo Lee since every projection site has him plus 290, but gained a lot of respect after your explanation. Look at that. There you go. Look at that. I'm bringing, I'm bringing Chase along. No, I, I, you're paying him 90, you're paying this guy $113 million. You're paying him $19 million a year. I, I, I think I said it before. I, I, he's likely to be good. But it's also the Giants haven't, you know, now they've signed Chapman and Snell. At that point, this was the biggest signing they'd made and, and the biggest signing in the, in the history of Farhan. And to me, for Farhan, who's just the most risk-adverse general manager I think I've ever seen, this guy has made 175 moves involving nobody. <laughs> um, I mean... <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, you know, I, I can't even. I'm, I, I could literally pick up, pick up a notebook. Danny could too. There's, I'm not joking. There's 150 mm -hmm. trades involving people that no baseball fan has ever heard of. Um, when you're that risk averse, to have your big first risk be a KBO hitter, when only um, the guy from Cleveland who I really loved, Shin Shin Su Chu, is really the only hitter. I mean, I watched the KBO during the pandemic. I, Tolbert and I used to bet on it. Um, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you got the, you know, you got the blank dinos and I've got the, you know, the, the, the Kia Tigers and you know, we were betting on this stuff. But guess what happened? When Major League Baseball came back, we stopped watching the KBO. Why? Because Major League Baseball is a totally different level than the KBO. So that was just my concern that, the Giants spent $113 million on a KBO hitter when most scouts tell you the KBO is like high A or low or low double A. So I was skeptical. There's lots of things to like about this player, and I can see that now, now that I've watched him for a few days. But I'll still say to everybody, back up. Don't, don't, let's not get crazy on this. Let's see what this looks like in June, right? Let's see what this looks like in July. But right now, he looks good in the outfield. He's got good bat-to-ball skills. Um, he looks confident in what he can do. Let's see what he looks like in six weeks. That's all I would say. And I'm not rooting, I'm not rooting against him, but I'm just I do understand Major League Baseball uh, advanced scouts, and I've seen some really good players, you know, kind of shut down. And I'm I'm eager to see what it looks like in six weeks. I'm rooting for him though. Don't, I'm not rooting against him. I'm rooting for him. We got Nick attacking the chat. Conforto is healthy. Will be a 850 OPS guy this year and the best hitter in the organization. These laughable dopes like so like the Solaire signing when he's middling when he's a middling DH. So how do they hate Conforto but not Solaire? Small sample that's size. A twenty dollar right? question. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a twenty dollar question. That's a twenty dollar question. Solaire here, went deep tonight. He did. Yeah. And, and you know this. And you know this. They says, put. They put him in between Conforto and Chapman. We were kind of saying that in the beginning of the season. You know why were they having him in the in the two hole when he had no protection behind him? Now they gave him some protection. Now he he had two hits. One of them being a home run. 
Yeah. I mean, it's- let's let's remember this. At the end of the day, thanks. Chase. People pay yeah. big money to watch this stuff. And that last one you had there from, can you put that one back up there from Mr. Broberg? He says, we're losing, but this team is way more exciting. <laughs> exactly. Like I sat on the couch with my son tonight and at four o'clock, he's like, Hey, giants are on against the Dodgers and the Warriors played tonight against the Mavericks yeah. in kind of a big yeah. game. And he wasn't like, Hey, I want to watch Warriors Mavericks. He's like, I want to sit on the couch and watch giants Dodgers. Why? Because He's kind of excited by Jung Hu Lee. He's kind of excited by Jorge Soler. He's kind of excited by the Giants kind of rejuvenation. So, and then baseball Giants Dodgers, you can't beat that. But but I think it's I think we all got to remember what does Jorge Soler bring to the table? He's he he provides power on a team that hasn't had a ton of power and it's a great it's a better show. I mean, this guy went deep 36 times last year and he, and there's in a park in the big leagues that will that will hold his blast. So, you know what? I, I like it. I mean, if you had to play him in right field for 150 games in the old National League, I wouldn't like it as much. Yeah. But in a league where now you've got the DH, um, heck yeah, bring me Jorge Soler. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it, and I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy watching him all summer. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this staff, about it. Oh, go ahead, Nick. The staff gets healthy. And if they just play to expectation. Mm-hmm. Not career, not you know, not twenty and five. Play to expectation and get Ray back. Then you know what? I think it's going to be an exciting year for him. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do something big at the at the deadline because of that. And I think that if they get in and their pitching is healthy, I think and you got Hicks and you got you know the other the kid at the end of well, it's it may be tough to beat. Yeah. Lou says he's betting the Dodgers run line tomorrow lock. I probably, <laughs> I might be with you. I took the Do- the Padres and the run line on Sunday. I said, they're what's the run smoke. line? The over under? Uh, no, just, no, it's usually just one, one and a half. half. Just one one and a half. Just win other words, by, more, win by the Dodgers two. are going to win by multiple runs tomorrow. Who's the, who's the matchup tomorrow? It's Glasnow versus Harrison. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we talk about excitement. I was on this show and I was adamant that the Giants not sign Matt Chapman to a long-term deal. And I kind of relented at the end in saying, if they're going to sign him, just make it a short-term deal because I didn't want to lock up the future of, you know, possibly seeing Casey Schmidt. Plus, I just didn't think paying a 31-year-old guy who hasn't hit over 250 in five years. But I'll say this. When you talk about excitement, it's not just offense, the game. Defensively, Matt Chapman may be one of the best third bases I have ever seen. This guy has such quick feet and his hands. He just is amazing. He really is a dynamite third baseman. Is he is he the best, Ned? I mean, I, I mean, I was I was born the year Brooks Robinson did his thing in the World Series. That was the year I was born. So I I I can't really speak to that. When I, if you say greatest defensive third baseman I've seen, I'll go to Mike Schmidt. I'll go to, uh, you know, I used to pretend when I was seven or eight that I was Craig Nettles, right? Because of the World Series stabs against the Dodgers in the late 70s. Um, Somehow I can't picture that. Matt Williams. <laughs> Matt Williams was one of my favorites. I thought he was one of the greatest defensive third baseman I've ever seen. But this guy, Chapman, is just so special. Danny hit it right on the head. I mean, what I notice more than anything is that he, he, he a lot of third basemen will have variable um, releases as far as they may release it f- further back if it's a, or, you know, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll release it. This guy always, no matter if it's a shot, you know, to his right, to his left, he gets like centered. And it doesn't look like he would get a lot on the throw, but then he just gets tons on the throw, and it's a perfect strike. Um, to me, it's 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 his throwing that is just like he's so locked in. It's crazy. You know, you, you nobody mentioned the guy that won like seven or eight straight gold gloves that's still playing either. 
Mm. Nolan Arenado. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Arenado, yeah. Well, he's, he's, I don't know if Chapman's the greatest ever. I've, he's very good. I, I I have a hard time with greatest ever, but uh, on any on any level, uh, but defensively very very good. And you trust you trust the player, you yeah. trust the defense. Um, you know you've got to have defense. Defense ain't very sexy, but you can't win without it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No chance. Yeah. Nick, another ten dollars. Giants Damn, went all in this year. Nick with... is doing Nick is do, typing in from the ATM yeah. machine. <laughs> I hope that's going into my account. Let me look. Here. I, I I don't think so. <laughs> Am I bringing the money to the table here? <laughs> you know, yeah. secure, secure money. Am I bringing the secure money? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Giants went all in this year with no planet shortstop. <clears throat> Nick Ahmed has the worst swing in baseball, although he's driven in <laughs> some big runs already this year. I don't care about his Texas Ligger knocks. In three weeks, he will be an automatic out. Luciano, please. Ooh. Well, again, uh, talking about defense, um, Nick Ahmed is a gold glove defensive shortstop, and the Giants chose to go defense over offense currently and uh you know maybe luciano i i do agree with you in that i think the giants if they're going to really take off at some point i think luciano is going to play a part in that because his bat is special i mean we saw him in scottsdale (laughs) hit one off the scoreboard (laughs) in a game danny in scottsdale who was he who was he facing I don't know, but he still hit it off. Danny, you could hit it to the warning track. Uh, if Kruger's nah. pitching, you could hit it to the warning track in Scottsdale. I don't know, but he's hit the Coke bottle in BP at uh, – at, uh, But it's B- – for me, I'm I'm different. BP. I'm I, saying, I, think, he's, I think they're playing it right. I think they're I think playing their hand right. The game. I, I do too. I think get Luciano more time to develop. Let him get a little bit more, you know, defensive uh, reps – in the minors where it doesn't matter as much if you make an error uh, or two or three, uh, but it does in the big leagues. We saw it in the first inning when they put Tyler Fitzgerald in instead of Ahmed Sunday, a routine ground ball to him. First out of the game blows it and five runs erupt mm-hmm. and the game's At over. At some point in time, you'll see Luciano playing the first six innings of the game and Ahmed coming in for the last. Yes, that's exactly. Game. I agree. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, Nothing wrong with that. And also the that. Giants, I mean, I think we talked about this last time Ned was with us. The Giants made the right call on third base because they were looking at Ahmed, they were looking at Crawford coming back, and they said, you know what, we're going to go with Ahmed. Ahmed's got a little bit more body left, a little bit more athleticism left, a little yeah, less heavy legs. Crawford's he's a little better athlete. Um, he, he, they're the same guy. I mean, him and Crawford are literally the same guy. They're going to play great defense in the infield. They're going to calm everybody down. The one thing I, I've noticed as a Giants fan the last few years is that when Crawford is not on the field, the Giants became a circus defensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, he made every play. And if you don't realize it, every time there was a pop-up anywhere, anywhere in the on the left side of the diamond, middle of the diamond, center fielder deferred to Crawford. The left fielder deferred to Crawford. The third baseman deferred to Crawford. The second base, everybody deferred to Brandon. And when you took him off the field, it was like they couldn't play any defense at all. So they needed a defensive stopper. And that's all Ahmed is. He, and he's actually a pretty great athlete for being that big of a guy. Um, he's not going to hit. We all know he's going to hit 215. He's going to hit 220. I mean, but he is motivated this year because the Diamondbacks did, you know, get rid of him. And he is kind of pissed about it, it sounds like. And maybe he'll be good against them. That's a bunch of games. Um, and, um, you know, they're a team that you want to compete against. But I think they played their hand right. Don't for I know uh, Luciano got hot at the end of spring training. But he, obviously he had a hole in his swing early in spring training or he had issues early because he was just an automatic out. I mean, he was just making outs every single day, all day. So let him – I think the best plan is to let Luciano get really rolling, you know, where he's he's got 12 hits in his last 16 at-bats and it's June 19th and Ahmed's got a hamstring. And then bring him up when he's really, really rolling and see if he can, you know, stay stay afloat 
uh, for a few weeks. And then I think ultimately Ned just made the perfect, you know, analysis, which is, you know, you, you, you start them, you start them for five or six and you go to a med in the late innings. But I mean, if you're trying to get, you're trying to bring Roop along and you're trying to bring some of your pitchers along and Harrison, um, man, you got to have somebody who can pick it at shortstop. And, yep. and I, th- I think they made the right call there. I yep. really do. Well, you, you know, know, you, know who disagrees, you know who disagrees with you, Larry? Who's that? Your banker. Nick. Hmm. <laughs> Luciano wasting his time in sack because of this ridiculous ABS strike zone. Let him come up and struggle for two months. Then he will adjust and be ready to rock in the second half. I don't I mean, you know, Nick, it's an interesting viewpoint. Let's ask Ned because Ned there's, we're, we're talking about two different strategies. There's the put him up there, let him fail, let him, you know, let him totally fail, fall on his face and break him down and build him back up, you know, approach. Matt and Williams then there's my approach, approach which is, Stick him in the minors until he's really, really, really rolling, and then uh, and then promote him. I mean, there's there's arguments to be made for both uh, both tactics. What do you think? I um, I don't think you sign Snell and Chapman and Lee, and then have uh, if come maybe playing shortstop by himself. I think the signings that they made, especially late in the, in the off season indicate to me that they're going to, they want to compete right now. And I think whenever you have a young player, it's always best to have a backup to the young player. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a hybrid answer to this. I leave them down for a little while longer, let them get hot, let them really start to be the best player six days a week, five, six days a week, really get them to that point and then bring them up and let them play five, six innings, get three at bats, really get that under control and have Ahmed back them up and and play the last Mm. couple innings of every game. So you're not losing games with defense or because of anxiety or because of whatever late, you know, you've got to be able to pick it up. You got to be able to limit the other team the 27 outs. You can't be giving them 28 or 29 because you're going to try and, and rush somebody to the to the show. The show ain't that easy. And if you got if you've done what they've done, you know, they're not they're not trying to to win 81 games. They're trying to get in. So, you don't have to make a decision right now. Let the kid let the kid really get good. Hmm. Then you bring him up and you still got a little bit of a safety net. And you know what? If he was really a great defensive player as time goes on and the offense is there and the offense is there when it when the lights are the brightest, okay, then you can figure out what you're going to do with Ahmed. But until then, Ahmed to me has got great value because he lets you he lets you bring Luciano up at some point in time and you don't have to entrust a kid with all the pressure that comes with playing every day, nine innings a day, both sides of the ball, it's it's a lot to ask. Very, very few players are able to do that, especially in the middle, especially in the middle of the of the, of the diamond. Ned, two part question for you on this ABS. I've only got zone. time for one there, Danny. Okay. I gotta I gotta get some okay. sleep. Okay. Well, the I'm ABS the ABS strike part. zone. Uh, does what he's saying, Nick? Does that make a difference in the minor leagues as far as players getting used to? that versus coming up and maybe getting calls that are outside the strike zone, getting called on by certain umps. Yeah. And, and the second part, do you see the, do you see the automatic strike zone coming to the big league soon? I don't know about what soon is it'll, one it'll to two years. There. One to it'll two get years. There some, it'll get there at some point. Um, that's what that's, that's how our sports is going. Um, you know, I think, you know, different umpires have different strike zones. Machine could have a different strike zone than, then you know when he gets called up, um, I think it's I think for hitters to be really good hitters, and I, th- I think back to the the great hitters, the the, the Bretts, the Barry Bonds's, the Tony Gwynns, uh, you're talking about constant adjustment. The best will adjust pitch to pitch. I got I just got called a strike on a pitch I thought was outside. Step out, 
I got to, I got to adjust to that. Okay. That's what the best ones do. So whatever the strike zone is, you're going to have to adjust to it. If you're going to be one of the best players in the game, that's just what the best ones do. It's a constant adjustment. Those who adjust once a month, they end up, they end up doing something else for a living. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ned, uh, we appreciate you joining us tonight and uh, we'll have you back as you say, we'll get you on once a week or every 10 days or so, if that works yeah, out for your schedule. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's figure that out. Love being on with you guys. Awesome. No bats, Thanks. no bats and balls tonight, huh? We got well, different- I'm, at, I'm at school tonight. I teach at Pepperdine on Tuesday night and Wednesday day. And I stay up at the little hotel here on campus. So I'm up at the, uh, I'm up at the little hotel oh, nice. up in Malibu. You mean you're roughing it in Malibu. <laughs> Do you ever uh, walk around that campus and just go, Jesus, wow. Yeah, every day I must this. have been up here eight years now. Yeah. And, wow. or, or even driving up onto campus. I mean, KD's got a place out there. All the all the big Hollywood people have places in Malibu. I haven't, you know, Malibu is one of those places that if you don't live, if you don't have a reason to go there, there's almost no reason that you'd ever go there. But it is got to be as spectacular as almost any as any you know, any 15 mile or 20 mile stretch of California coastline, Malibu, wow. what, Ma, what Malibu, Ned, give us a quick Malibu. It's, um, it's, it's beautiful. It's peaceful. Um, PCH is, is, uh, sometimes very dangerous. Mm. We had four students killed uh, back in November. Mm. How so? Because the rocks falling and stuff? No, no. Somebody driving allegedly over 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, you got to pay attention. And um, but it is it is a stunning place. Uh, there's there's no doubt. And uh, you know the the views from campus. You know, I usually I'll usually walk the students to the big window in in class once a semester and say, so. Um, you're looking at this right now. Do you want to look at this besides inheriting very well later on in life? Well, you better start paying attention and start working because this does not come easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say. There you go, man. Well, thanks yeah, that's, for jumping that's in, man. got to be one of the best campuses in, in, yeah. in all of America. I went it's, to It's an Lomo. honor to teach up here, and it, yeah. uh, not because of the beauty of the campus, but because of the people that uh, that work here and the people who go to school here. It's, that's uh, great. You know, many times, I mean, I'm flying all over the place. I'm at LAX every week, twice, sometimes wow. three times. I'm in San Jose all the time. I'll be up there Sunday morning. We have a three o'clock game. I'll get in in the morning. I'll fly out at night. Uh, I'm always at an airport, it seems, even at this stage of life. Man, uh, you need to get a pilot's license. But I, only, but I only do it because I love doing it. And right. I, you know, I could probably teach other places, but... Uh, it's tough to it's tough to leave a place where you know that people really care, yeah. And they do the best they can to to help everybody who comes through here as an employee or as a young person trying to trying to learn more about the vocation that they they want to pursue. It's kind of like this live stream. You know, <laughs> exactly. it's very difficult to leave a place where you know Danny cares as much as Danny. Who wishes a little bit more than a dollar ninety nine a question though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, All right, Ned. Boys, we'll see you ha- later. Ha- have a great Thanks, night. Ned. We'll see you. Thanks, Ned. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you, Ned Coletti, the the uh, the great Ned Coletti. Awesome stuff. That well, was awesome. You know, um, it's interesting. Pepperdine, man, they used to have a really good basketball team, like. 20 years ago for like yeah. three or four years in a row. They Aren't were they like, always good? They're always good. Yeah, they, they were always good. good. They were always, good. always I good. I don't know what happened to them. I haven't heard much of them in the last decade or so. Um, but they used to. I'm trying to know, think who their star was, but they had somebody yeah. who went to the NBA who was damn good. Yeah. They were just not thinking of. Yeah. Uh, just, but yeah, I mean, Pepperdine, Pepper. I mean, you know, I've seen pictures of that campus. And you're, it's just looking over the over Malibu right there, and it's like, wow, that is a spot, man. And then if you drive to L.A. or if you go to L.A., there's no real reason to drive by there. You know what I mean? It's like you wouldn't go up there unless you own property up there or went to school there. Right, um, right. But it is, it is spectacular. We got another one from Nick here, huh? Yeah, he put – no, I think Chase put one out there. No, oh, no, it's I, Nick. This one right here? Yep, that's the one. Luciano's issue is that he's 
uh, too passive right now. The ABS strike zone will just let him walk versus junk ballers in AAA. I'd rather him in Richmond than Sack. Is Richmond not have the uh, ABS? Or? I don't know. That I couldn't tell you. That's interesting because but Chase I, had another one in here too as well. Uh, Crawford was a negative defender by all metrics the last two years. Defense goes before hitting. Your opinion of Farhan changed this offseason. Your opinion on Farhan changed quiet. after this offseason? Maybe he meant has, has it. it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I don't know because, I mean, it's just, you know, there's they're still – they're still in this mode of kind of, you know, I, I, I just think that Farhan is serving a different master than I'm used to. I'm used to, uh, you know, pick up and put together a team and, um, market that team and then have people buy tickets. I, he, he still reacted, you know, so much of what he did this year was so late in the game. And is that Farhan or is that is it is reactive? That Boris? Right. Yeah. Is it? Bo I mean, can we blame Boris for yeah. that? I mean, we know the Dodgers just went out and got what they wanted. They 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 said, okay, this is what our off season is. We're just going to go get it before anybody else does, and they spent the money and got it. I'm kind of um, Farhan. He's I'll very worried. He's very worried about how he's perceived. I mean, don't you think? I mean, that's why. Do you really believe? Like the Giants offered Shohei Otani no. seven hundred million with six hundred and ninety-eight million deferred, like LA did. I don't believe that for a second, and that's yeah. a story that they've gone with all off season. So, you know that that it's like, are we being told the truth? Or are we being spun? Yeah. But I'll say this: I I always have liked Farhan as I I couldn't stand Kapler because <laughs> Kapler was a classic bully. But Kapler was a classic you know, uh, fake and fraud, yeah. but Farhan's a nicer person. And I think a way smarter guy. Um, but ultimately it's going to come down to, you know, do, do, do they win? And, and thus far they have not won in his regime. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of, work. uh, you know, I look at it this way with Farhan to me, he focuses on certain things and like you said, he's so risk adverse. And then he makes, he spends so much time to me on the back end of the 40. Like, for example, he goes and signs Tom Murphy, $4 million a year for two years. You had Joey Bart, who could be a backup catcher, cost you nothing. He's 27. Murphy's 33 tomorrow. Uh, and does then, Murphy does the does the net difference make you better that much better? Not that much, not that much. It, but it, it's, it's paying it, more, yeah. It, but you're paying more. What I would have done is taken that four million, not resign, not tendered Austin Slater for four million. There's eight million, and I wouldn't have tendered Yaz for eight million. That's sixteen. That right. turns into Reese Hoskins, and now you have an everyday first baseman that can hit thirty homers. Uh, but to and, hear some Giants fans say it, Danny, they feel like the people who are like in the analytics crowd are were arguing after that, after Hoskins signed with the Brewers, that the Giants were better off with Wilmer and uh, and and Lamont Wade. So, I mean, if you really believe that going with Wilmer Flores, who's a pretty good hitter, and Lamont Wade, um you know, over Reese Hoskins is a, is a, you know, a, a, a superior first baseman. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I guess I don't know baseball because in my mind, Reese Hoskins is clearly better than a Wade Flores platoon. Clearly. Right. Yeah. And, and I, and I, and I think so. Even and, if and the D is not good. And then he, and he, and, and he does this, he, he, he signs Cooper Hummel. And he signs Otto Lopez, and he DFAs these guys to bring up Nick Avila and uh, the kid that pitched uh, Jeffries, Jeffries. Jeffries. And Jeffries is already back down. I mean, you basically said, okay, Joey, we're giving up on you for one start <laughs> for Dalton Jeff. And he did the same thing a few years ago with Dixon Machado. He signs Dixon Machado and let that 
uh, I can't remember the kid's name. He pitched in the 21 playoffs, the the reliever. Uh, yeah, I forget. Kind of a thick, kid. thick guy the with a big curveball. Or, yeah, yeah. He had really good stuff, and then he kind of lost it over a year, but his velocity, and they just gave up. I don't know. Maybe he was a good move, but it's these these moves that you pick up for a week or two. It doesn't seem like there's any long-term plan. Like, why are we picking up guys – just to get rid of him a couple weeks later. It just, I mean, I thought Otto Lopez looked like a guy that was pretty athletic. That looked like a guy that could, maybe if Luciano's not ready, maybe he's on the 40. Maybe you could put this guy in and he's he plays short or second and he steals some bases and, and gets on base. You know, he looked like He a, does the fantasy football thing. I do it, you do it, we all do it, which is... Yeah. You get that last spot on your fantasy bench and you keep scouring the list of available players and you keep saying, well, if I just, maybe I'll just add this one guy and I'll add this one guy pretty soon. You've made like eight transactions and, and you've got this, you've made eight transactions with players that have not even played one week of your fantasy (laughs) team because they, because you're just always looking for kind of incremental improvement. I don't know. I'm, I think Farhan's smart, but I think his communication skills is not great. Um, I think he does get worked a little bit by agents. I think he got worked by Boris big, uh, you know, are you telling me that there was a team out there that was willing to give Jung Hu Lee, you know, there wasn't, you had to go 19 million a year. You couldn't, you couldn't have gotten Jung Hu Lee for like 15 or 16 million a year. I'd love to know the major league team that was going to give him, you know, 17 or 18 million a year. I feel like Boris worked him on it. I really do. But you know, here's the bottom line. If they can get, if they can get into the playoffs and it's easier never to get into the playoffs every year, they add a playoff team and it's easier to get in. If they can get into the playoffs and somehow Robbie Ray and Blake Snell and, and, you know, Logan Webb, can get them through a couple rounds and they wind up in a NLCS or a world series, you know, all will be forgotten. It just seems kind of, um, I'll say this. I like the vibe better this year where last year it felt like full on analytics Yeah. where this year it feels like Farhan's analytics, but man, you got some real baseball guys in there, Melvin and, and uh, you know Williams. Ryan Christensen and Matt Williams, and it just it just feels like hey, a little Wahlberg's, bit better balance. Wahlberg's a good, uh, yeah. Wahlberg's a baseball guy. He's a first base coach, um, uh, or not Wahlberg? How, how what is this? Halberg? 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 Ma- Mark Halberg? Yeah. Halberg. Yeah. Um, it he, helps he, being best uh, Buster Posey's best friend too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I'll say this: the the team is going to be in the chase for a wild card. It's probably going to come down to September and does Farhan make any moves at the all, you know, at the trade deadline. I mean, last year they were in the top wild card position and they did nothing but sign AJ Pollock and you know, the Giants just went completely downhill. It's almost like the locker room was like, "What? This is all you you don't believe in us?" I mean, come on. You they, free, st- they, they were in a free fall after that move. Yeah, you got A.J. Pollock coming off a hamstring injury who hadn't played in a month, and that was your best move? It's like, really? So, and then Arizona makes three or four moves and makes it to the World Series. So the Giants this year have the potential to get into the playoffs, and Robbie Ray is pretty much like an, a trade acquisition at the deadline because that's about when you're going to – when you're going to be, he's going to be available sometime around August. And if, you know, he's healthy, my concern really is, is, is kind of surprising. I've kind of said this and I, and I, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I have some concerns about the, uh, the uh, efficiency this year with Logan Webb. I, I mean, he threw so much the last couple of years, innings wise, and he's pitched more and more the last couple of innings. This year, I mean, 96, 97 pitches tonight. 
in four and what do you go four and two thirds, four and a third tonight? Uh, 30 in the first, you know, that kind of set up his night. Yeah. But overall, what did he 95, many, 95, yeah, he 95, got the 90s. Yep. 95 and he, and he went, uh, he went four and, uh, no, three, 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 five strikes, three and two thirds. Yeah. Didn't even get through the fourth. So three nope. and two thirds innings. Um, if he, I mean, we see this a lot in baseball where guys have really good years, couple, two, three years, and then they, they kind of fall back. The league kind of figures it out or something. Cause, um, I mean, he's good enough to really, uh, get, uh, his stuff. He, he has for Webb to be effective. He's got to have location, location, his locations. Get, and, t- you know, Teams like the Dodgers lay off of that. Where he beats teams is where people go up and sw- swing at that uh, that sinker ball. And a slider away. To and a right. slider, yeah, and they just keep swinging and swinging. But uh, I kind of liked – I mean, I got to be honest. I kind of liked the way the giant bullpen looked tonight. I mean, you know, yes, Webb couldn't get out of the fourth, but Roop gave you two shutout, struck out four. Mm-hmm. Taylor Rogers, I thought, you know, he had some excellent movement on his his breaking pitch, and then Ryan Walker is pretty nasty. I mean, he went an inning in two third. He walked one. He's got you know mid nineties fastball. He can move the ball from right to left. He can move the ball from left to right. I mean, he's kind of he's got a rubber arm. He can play. He can pitch in almost any scenario. So, um. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting. What does Cobb give when he comes back? What does um, Robbie Ray look like when he comes back? Are those guys so impressive that ta- that uh, that Hicks, Jordan Hicks, can be an eighth inning guy? If Jordan Hicks is your eighth inning guy, and you got these other guys kind of leading into Hicks and Doval, they might be pretty good on the mound. My, my big question with Farhan was why the early off season commitment to Slater and Yaz. Oh, it wasn't like this, this happened two weeks before spring training. It was like, we got to get this done. And I don't get it. You've cl- essentially clogged your outfield. You really should be playing Luis Matos, but you're not, yes. you really should have probably tried to find a, a, another fast athletic outfielder uh, before, you know, in spring training to fill in. But you you weren't looking for that because you got Yaz and Slater, and they're both hitting zero, and Yaz has had three years in a row of really bad yeah. stats. Slater's just kind of a eh, you know. Speaking, I mean, he's all he's all right. He's we know like, who Slater and Yaz are. Yeah, they, he's like a fourth or fifth outfielder at best. The rest of the team, I got no problem with really. I mean. The rest of the team is, is you know, the other guy that's going to be interesting to watch offensively is Patrick Bailey. Patrick Bailey yeah. had a terrible at-bat tonight. Yeah, ter- at he end. took that strike three right down the right middle. Right down the right middle. And, down he, the middle. and right now he's hitting 308 with a 400 on base. And I yeah. think if you play him every day, he's probably going to hit. Two, you know, I was going to say 235 with a 315 on base. And yeah. he threw another ball in the outfield. Yeah. I will say this about Murphy, and I, I don't, I didn't love, you know, it, to me it made no, I agree with your point, which is, hey, you know, Mur- Murphy's not a catcher. I mean, that's the thing. Joey Bart's a better catcher than Murphy. Right. He's a better no defensive doubt. catcher. He's a better defensive catcher. Why not just go with Joey Bart since you want to see him anyway and, and just, you know, go with young catching and be healthy there all summer? Instead, you go with Murphy, and I, I, I can, I'm excited by Murphy's bat. He, he looks like a hitter, um, but his defense is just totally subpar. So you know what? Like, you know what I would have done, Larry. Player. You know what I would have done. It, it's, it's, it's thinking out of the box, and it's a little bit controversial. Some people would just say it's crazy, but you had a guy in Joey Bart. You really didn't know. I mean, he had a really good spring. Hit over 400. And you you wanted to carry three catchers so you could protect him for a little while, you know. They sent Luciano down and Matos down. Why? Because they have options. Mm-hmm. So does Patrick Bailey. Why not start the season with Joey Bart for two weeks and see what he's got? And you know what? If he's hot and you want to trade him, you get more value. 
And if you, <laughs> you know, if you if you're gonna dump him anyway for nothing, why not see what he can do? And Bailey had options. There's no crime in sending Pat starting Patrick Bailey in in the minors. He jumped ba last year. But Bailey is Farhan's one draft success yeah. story, and because of it, he's getting the golden boy treatment, even but though look, he's he, got a lot of a lot of development left. He does. He he does not. I mean, I've seen Pat. He led the league last year in pass balls. You know. I wanted to ask this to Ned, but I know he had to go. But if, if they bring back, if they bring in the automatic strike zone, Patrick Bailey's value goes way down because there's no more framing. It's just, you know, and he's not a great, uh, as far as, you know, catching the ball all the time. He lets a lot of balls just get past him, but he isn't a tremendous framer. And that's what makes him so valuable to the pitching staff. But for, Everybody out there who's new and watching on Larry's channel, the Krug Show, and NorCal Sports Network, we're we're doing a simulcast uh, show right now. I want to tell you guys my Twitter account. I want to show you. I put out a tweet today, uh, and that's at NCAL, NCAL Sports, NET, Net, then Work, WK. And uh, this trade here I put out, is something that I wanted to show everybody because I can't see it. So just yeah, tell me what it it's is. It's hard to see. Can you see the, uh, it's, it's kind of a picture, but it's for Luis Robert. I feel like I'm at a, I feel like I'm at my eye doctor appointment. Yeah, better left, is, better yeah. right. <laughs> I'll have to pull uh, I can. I'll I, pull it up somewhere else. R C L. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, baseball trade values. It's, it's pretty much what, uh, a lot of trades are used by there's a value placed on them. And, and uh, Luis Robert has a trade value of 76. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or 77, 77.3. The giants don't have a lot of guys that have value in their system. The best three guys in the system are uh, Webb at 75. And then you have Harrison at 34. And, um, Duvall's like a 29, but Luis Matos is a 33. Luciano's a 23. Rainer Ararius is 11. Mason Black, a 5. And Yaz, a 5.8. That equals 78. So what I was suggesting is that the Giants trade for Luis Robert and John Brebbia to shore up the bullpen. Here's what, the, the, what it says. If the Giants are not going to play Matos, and Luciano trade them for a star like Luis Robert of the White Sox. They are terrible and looking to rebuild. This trade works, and the Giants need more bats in the lineup. With Snell and Cobb would, back, would in the, the White rotation, Sox do that? Well, I think the White Sox are uh, by trading Cease. I think they're signaling that they are open for business because they had a decent team. Why? I don't know why you would just get rid of your best pitcher and. Um, I don't think they're going anywhere with uh, with what they have. Roberts Heck, is. I'll say I'll say this. I mean, if 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 they really if the White Sox are backing up a truck, I mean, how about a couple prospects for Andrew Vaughn? I mean, he went to Cal. You could stick him at first base. You got a first baseman. Yeah, for the next Vaughn 10 would years. be great. But, but I mean, uh, Luis Robert is phenomenal. I mean, yeah. that's what I'm saying. That that's the thing. The Giants. I'd love to see Farhan be real aggressive with trying to add. You know, they've got, they've got pitching, they've got, they've got, you know, a kind of a surprising pen in some ways. Um, I, I would say that one more bat could make a big difference for them. Yep. I agree. Luis Robert. Are you kidding me? Oh my me? gosh. Yeah. You add Luis Robert to this team. This team's good. And by the way, the, the Giants split in San Diego. They're getting outclassed here in LA, but. I think they're going to hammer the the league, um, you know, outside of outside of a couple teams. I think the Giants could win consistently in this league. So it's not, you know, don't get too down because they, you know, it, it looks like it's going to take heaven and earth to beat the Dodgers. You don't have to beat the Dodgers. You just need to kind of hang around, win a few games with the Dodgers, and then beat up on the rest of the league. And I think that's doable. Look at me being positive. 
<laughs> Dan, you're muted. I, I was to say, I do want to say this to everybody. I do believe that uh, Matos, I believe in keeping Matos and Luciano and building these with these guys for the future. But it appears that Farhan wants to go with older aging vets with little upside, like Slater and Yaz, known on NorCal Sports Network as Slaz. We just combine them together. <laughs> slaz. You want some Slaz? You get it. Robert has a can. Sounds like in- something you put on like a deli sandwich. Yeah. Would you, yeah give me a, you want I'll- Slaz? Oh, yeah, yeah. Get, make sure I get some Slaz. Give me it's some like, Slaz. It's up, like yeah. a salad plus like lettuce plus, yeah. you know. Slaz. Little That's sauce. it. I want a little slaz on my sandwich. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. take a look at this lineup I came up with. If, if you did have Luis Robert, that, <laughs> that's Lee leading off, Robert batting second, Conforto, Soler, Chapman, Wade Flores, whoever you want to go with, Estrada, Bailey, and Ahmed. And then if you, like Ned said, Luciano comes up later on in the, in the year and you play him the first six innings and put Ahmed in for defense. I mean, the Giants need another bat, and they need some bullpen. The bullpen's going to get solved, I believe, when Snell comes back and and Cobb and then eventually Ray. Now you can move Hicks to the bullpen and and, uh, Keaton Wynn, who would be good. And you got Landon Roop. Now you got solid bullpen. But you can't go with some of these guys that are just – I mean – Who's the know. dog meat guy in their pen? I mean, I I I like. I mean, Taylor Rogers. I like Tyler. Is kind of a little bit you know, too gimmicky little, for me. But I mean, he gets it yeah, done. He, but he, yeah. I mean, he, I don't know if I can trust Tyler Rogers. Right. I don't know if he's a championship caliber reliever. But the rest of it, if you had Hicks, I mean, Hicks is amazing. Doval is is uh, you know the, maybe the best closer in the league. Um, Ryan Walker is. Uh, plenty good. I'm 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 fine with Ryan Walker, and this kid Roop is just really ridiculous. I mean, I to me that's the story of the night is is they went to Landon Roop and he struck out the hottest guy in the game with a curveball on the hands that was just the nastiest thing I've seen. So I think their pen might you know might not be as big of an issue. They're one good you know real good bat short that's yeah. what they are if they yeah. have one more real good bat mm-hmm. they would be a 90 win team yeah that's why i say if you're gonna go for it why not try and go get a luis robert i mean the guy adds power he adds uh you think he's available uh, huh i think for the right price that you could get him i think if the white Sox saw that they could get matos arias and Luciano plus a, a, a pitcher like a Mason Black, or you might have to go with a Wizen Hunt. I was trying to avoid a Wizen Hunt, but if you could, if you did that, I think the White Sox say, "Well, gosh, we've got a top 100 player in Luciano. Matos looks like he's coming into his own, uh, and they're both 22. Um, the White Sox can can kind of reload. I mean, eventually they're going to do it. They're I mean, they'll probably not trade Robert, and they'll sit on him and 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 waste him, uh, because the White Sox aren't aren't winning anytime soon. Uh, I just don't I don't see it. I, my question would just be: forget the big names for a second. Just right now, let's just say, are you telling me that Mike Yastrzemski is a better option than Wade Meckler? Uh, I don't even think so. I think Wade Meckler is a better so. hitter. I, I think, think Wade, Wade Meckler is a much better hitter. Yeah, I think uh, I think Matos is better. Meckler is better. I think um, yes. You know, um, I don't know what they're, how long they're going to hang on to this Slaz group. I mean, they're I don't get it. They're still. I think it is a Slater eligible for free agency after yes. this year. Okay, so he's he's probably done unless nobody wants him and Farhan loves him and signs him to some two three million dollar deal, but. Um, it's almost I mean, like Farhan feels like the attendance is tied to Yaz and Slater. And I don't, I think he's totally okay. wrong by that. I don't think giants. Oh, nobody, nobody, up. nobody cares about those. Nobody, Martin nobody, them, you know, Slater's from Stanford. Yaz is a recognizable name. It's like, so, I mean, what are we, what are we talking about here? It's, it's, uh, it's bizarre. Larry, what did um, you make of the, the San Diego series? 
where they didn't even start Matos once. The only time they started him was because Flores got hurt. They didn't even, they didn't even start him in the right field when Yaz was down for a paternity leave. I, I know why. Why? We, we guessed. Yeah. We, we guessed. I, 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 think it's, I think it's true. I don't think they wanted Matos to start three games and have this monster series and go six for 12 while Yaz is off having a, you know, on, on a paternity leave and he comes back and loses his job because he had a baby. That doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. And you and can't. I, God, I hope Matos. that's not the end. Not true. Why wouldn't I mean, you that, play Matos? They said he had yeah. the best. Why would you even bring him up and just waste him for three days? You, I mean, why not just bring up, uh, you know, uh, Meckler or bring up uh, uh, Ramos, <laughs> Ramos, somebody that Matos needs to be playing. And you just he hadn't played since Monday night against Oakland. And you're just going to sit this kid for a week when he's 22. He needs to be in the lineup getting at bats and not sitting on the bench. I mean, I don't know. To me, and I get that Wade is fine in right field, but I just think they didn't want Matos to shine. Because what 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 would happen if Matos did come up and rake? What now? Well, he'd what, have to play. He'd have to play. And then what do you do with Yaz? You to sit him. You lost your job having a baby. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I mean, that of course does look bad. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, but I mean, that's really the weakness on the club. I mean, if you look at it, you know, Wilmer Flores is, is a, is maybe one of their best hitters. You got third base solved now at Chapman. Um, we already talked about, you know, Ahmed and, and Fitzgerald and, and Luciano at short, you know, uh, Tyro is your Willie Mack award winner. And he's, he's probably one of your most solid guys. Um, you know, Bailey Murphy behind the plate. I mean, you know, you, you signed Jung Hu, so you've committed to him in center. Uh, you, you got Conforto on a, on a bounce back year. Solaire's your everyday DH. And then it just comes down to Slater, Wade, and Yaz. And it's just odd that they would clog their outfield where there's so many good offensive options available typically every year with Slater, Wade, and Yaz. Now, some people really like Lamont Wade, but I. What did Lamont Wade do last year? Um, he did. He, a, he, didn't he, have he, he did okay. Year. He did okay. Did he? he? Did okay. he did Twenty-two. Okay. He was two fifty-six, seventeen home runs. I guess on up. The three seventy-three on base is good. Right. But you know, it's like really, you know, you're talking about, you know, Wade and Yaz and Slater in major outfield roles. Um, I feel good actually about their pen because I think that ultimately that that thing's going to solve itself. I I really do, especially if Keaton Wynn, who I thought looked really nasty in in you know the last game, um, if Keaton Wynn were in your pen, you got a big power righty with a nasty splitter and ninety six miles an hour, and you've got Ryan Walker and the versatility there, and then you've got Roop and his killer curveball. You got the Rogers brothers. Uh, you got Jordan Hicks. You got Doval. I mean, there's that, to me that's Giants will pen. compete. They need another bat. I I said this from One the more. beginning. Uh, I don't like the the lineup, the makeup. It it to me it has too many hitters that are two forty or under, um, and you need some more pop. And uh, you know, if you're not going to go with somebody like a Luis Robert. Um, why not find a way to go get Luis Arias and put him at first base? The guy can hit 330, another guy on base. Uh, why does everybody want to trade that guy? He's uh, Minnesota, Florida. And it seems like everybody wants to move this guy, and all the guy does is rake. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. He doesn't do much but hit, really. He's not a great defender. So that's that's a problem, um, but he he gets on base, he hits for average, and uh, you know, I don't know, he can play first base and second base. Um, I mean, that's where the Giants are were most improved. If you we haven't really talked about it, but defensively, now you got Bailey every day, you got you know Ahmed and Chapman on the left side. 
that's a really, really good left side. And you got Jung Hoo in center and he seems to be playing it confidently. So it's like they have improved dramatically defensively. Yeah, and Yaz and, is good in right field, but I, I don't Yaz, like his bat. Yaz is a good defender, but I'm just saying what they really could use is they just look a little bit outgunned mm -hmm. by some of by you know by the Dodgers. Uh, yeah, but I, I guess I, everybody's going to be that way. But um, I, to me, I think you you focused on the right thing. It's like they're really just that one one dangerous hitter away, one really solid bat away from being. Um, a team that could, you know, really make noise. The reason I would do that with Luis Robert is he's got four years of control. So I would give up all that to do it if you're not going to play these I would guys. Too. I mean, because, you know, Luis Robert, if he gets on a team with some veterans like Soler and, and Conforto and Chapman and some of these other guys and he sees the pitching staff that the Giants have, you know, it might light a fire under him. I'm sure it's tough to play in a team like the White Sox that are kind of cellar dwellers, you know? Yep. Well, hey, and, Dan, and let me what, hit somebody. What's, what's their direction, too? Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I got Chase said, way top 25 in OPS last year, but Slaz sucks. And then you got Nick go. with another 10 bucks. I think this organization is down on Luciano. The fact that they gave the job to this jackass, Ahmed kind of proves it so i'm down for that trade robert in center field lee in right field lee to right field and confardo and left mm. Can luis robert how, how good of a center fielder is he i think he is a center fielder if i'm not mistaken right but i mean how good is he out there is he yeah, better than jung hu lee mm. he's a he's a really good center fielder but i would stick him if you got luis robert i'd stick him in right field because he's stick got the right. best arm He's got a cannon for an arm. Yep, makes and, sense. And, and yep. that's why you'd stick your best guy in arm in right field. Could you imagine if they had a Luis Robert in right field and a and a and a polar bear at first base? Oh, oh my goodness. It'd be like the it'd be like the uh, 60s Giants. Maze I mean, McCovey Cepeda. I mean, I don't Ooh, I don't even care if they so win. We're just <laughs> I seriously don't. I the mean, fireworks, man. I mean, baseball season is a is is you know it's every day. You're watching right. this stuff every day. They're not. It's not the Niners. The Niners play seventeen Sundays. That's it, and then the season's over, and then it's playoff time. The Giants are going to play every night almost between now and the and beginning September. of October. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about I know. the entire it's summer. So in a lot of ways, it's like, hey, you know what? I want this to be really entertaining. And Absolutely. you know, my kid was like, you know, Solaire is gonna gonna walk or strike out or hit a home run all year. And I'm like, you know what? I really don't care because I love watching him hit. I, to me, he's I, I when he's coming up to bat, I I focus a little bit more on the TV just because I know this guy can put one in the stratosphere. And to me, that's part of the show. I like that. I like that aspect of baseball. And you know what I like about that idea with the trade too, Dan? It's because we can't sign free agents. Don't even think about Soto. Soto ain't happening, right? right? No. Nope, so the only nope, way nope. you really could do it is this: you, you may have to trade some guys that you may want to keep. Yeah, to and get trading guys sometimes. MLB you, talent. Yeah, sometimes you trade guys you don't want to trade, but it, it, to get something, you got to give up something. And After. it it's got to hurt. And you know what? But that's the problem with Robert. He doesn't proven. want it to hurt. <laughs> Robert is proven. The other guys, as much as we like Luciano, Matos, and we think of, they really haven't done anything yet. Well, the Giants so. are in a perfect spot right now. They don't yes. have 15 needs. They really don't. There's been other years where you're like, well, why bother? Because, you know, that, yeah, they could add one guy, but they're still going to have five different holes. If they could add a Luis Robert, you're you're talking about a team that could potentially win 90 games. I mean, they don't have a ton of holes. They really don't. Right. Rotations you kind of you fortified. Luis Robert. Now you you got some serious thump. Yeah. And 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 all his Lee has to do is concentrate on you know getting on base, hits the occasional home run, play solid defense. Now you got guys that can hit the ball out with Soler and Robert and you know Chapman and Conforto. You got four guys that could hit 25 homers 
And you just more. say to Jung Hu, hey, man, play the hell out of center field and set the table. That's yeah, it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You set the table. You get on base. He, you know, um, you get on base, walk or hit. Doesn't matter if extra base hits. Work on your contact game and score runs. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you know, I mean, I, I think, it, I, I do think the Giants can, can go out and get guys like that if they push for it because, uh, there's, there's no guarantee that the White Sox are willing to trade him. And that's what the public stance is. But the public stance was all spring. We're not trading Dylan Cease, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. They're, they're, they're signaling that they're not right. up for, for contending. So, I mean, imagine if the Giants today said, you know, we're trying to contend and we're trading Logan Webb for a couple of minor leaguers that we like. He'd say you're not serious about winning. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Is this true? <laughs> you didn't see that trade while we were on. Oh my! No, I did not. Yes, that was made. I made it. <laughs> Dan made a trade. <laughs> it was offered to me. I, I, we were working on a deal, and and uh, he threw in. He wanted Clay Holmes, and uh, I was looking at Lee. And he threw in Langford and uh, for Yaz added. And I said, okay. Who's going to get your saves? Uh, I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a save tonight with Helsley. Oh, that's good. Uh, and uh, I still Yeah, Hater have... blew a save for me today. Okay. These guys talked me in, Larry, to fantasy baseball, which I said I don't want to do. I've got too many have, moves. I've got to have a life. It's six months long, and here it is. We're a week in, and I've used 10 of my 60 waiver claims, <laughs> and I've made wow. two or three trades. Yeah. You made three so. trades in a matter of 24 hours. It's what I do. It's what it's, <laughs> it's the way he does it. It's what I do. I I don't know why, but uh <laughs> I said, I'm just, I told you uh, two days ago, I'm just going to let this thing go and see how my team does. And then Dan, just, sudden, Dan did picks you, up the waiver claim of Yaz just to, for the for shits and giggles. And got he him traded gets, somehow. And, he, and Glenn <laughs> traded. Robbie Wyatt Langford. <laughs> don't. I don't Dan. get it, man. Did you see Ned, by the way, chuckle when I, when I said Farhan's made 150 trades yeah. <laughs> involving <laughs> absolutely nobody? Yeah. I did. Oh, and it's not even, it's not, it, it, you know, it's not even a lie. It, it's probably that he's probably made more. Yeah. I went through a list of all of his transactions and I was going to do a video on it. And I got about a year and a half into his regime. And I was like, I, that's it. I can't even do this video. There's just too many. There's too many pad lows. There's too many <laughs> Stewie Fairchilds. There's too many, you know, Connor Joes. I mean, Cooper it was just Hummels. like he he is just obsessed with the nothing trade. I mean, nobody makes more nothing trades. Oh, yeah. with Seattle. Yeah, exactly, Mark. Yeah. Nick <laughs> says uh Robert has a very team friendly deal right now, 12 and a half million this year, 15 next year in 25, then two straight years of club options at 20 million each. Yeah, that's why Not, he's going to cost. Uh, unrestricted free agent, and then he corrected it and means 2028. So you get four full seasons. That's what I was saying with Robert. That's why I would do that deal. You um, might have to pay a premium because of that, that the you know, the club control there, but it's worth it. Yeah, you get yeah. two Cubans in the lineup there. Well, and here's here's the thing, you know, is it gonna burn? I mean, if one of these guys like I think Mato's a pretty nice little player. Okay, I think Luciano's got major right-handed power, but there's to me he doesn't quite look like a shortstop. He's a little stiff. Uh, he's got a huge swing. It's just like he, to me, if you told me three years from now he's a power hitting left fielder, I would probably I could I would probably agree with that. Um, so I mean, Rainier Arias supposedly is their real hot prospect but who cares at the end of the day 
is Rainier Arias going to be better than Luis Robert in the majors? Probably not. So, you know what? I mean, they're kind of in a juicy spot right now in that they do have enough prospects to trade for one, you know, good bat. And that's really what they need is one good bat. So it's kind of a juicy situation this summer for the giants. If they can just hang around, get some positive, um, you know, pitching and roop and some of these guys and just get to, you know, mid June or early July with just needing that one extra bat, they might be able to. Well, this is what I want to to make. I, I want Farhan to actually not wait. Why? You know, the best GMs, they make moves before everybody else. And they, you know, Andropolis, you know, he's making deals. He's not waiting until July 31st. He's making deals in the year they won the World Series in 21. He's making deals <laughs> in early July and uh, getting guys done. Farhan should try to get out in front of this and go out and get a Luis Robert and move some of these guys and see it start, start pushing, you know, making the phone calls to see what's available to add that guy so that maybe when you, it comes around June, early July, you can pull that trigger um, ahead of everybody else. So Speaking what's so of funny? Pulling the trigger. What do we Glenn, got? Glenn just dropped yes. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. He just, he just dropped yes and picked up Michael A. Taylor. Oh, Michael A. Taylor's not bad. Shoot. But he trade, but he just traded for Yaz. Why would you? Who, <laughs> who, who is this uh, genius general manager? <laughs> oh, man. Come on, Glenn. What are you doing? <laughs> Wait a minute. I picked up Yaz for tonight's game yes. because uh, I didn't have any outfielders <laughs> playing because of guys were on the bench and I had a. I just had this weird feeling that Yaz was going to hit a home run tonight because he had a kid and he and the Dodgers were throwing a bullpen game. I thought, well, maybe Yaz, you know, he does the heroic thing, hits one down the right field line with that short porch with that little three foot fence. And I get some big points. And all of a sudden I'm dealing with this deal. It's just it's just Yaz. I mean, it's just. Young Hu Lee for Clay Holmes, and I'm debating, debating, and I'm trying to, and then all of a sudden the show starts, and I see Glenn sends me, he changes and he adds Wyatt Langford to the deal and wants Yaz, and it says bingo, I'll take it, and now he let Yaz go. That's all right. He, hey, he's in second place. Hey, next time we're playing poker, let's invite him. We'll send him a town. <laughs> let's send a town car for that guy. Unbelievable. He just said, thanks, Dan. I'm thrilled with our trade. Needed the saves to get me over the hump. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that I part. Get that. I understand that. I gave up Lee and Langford for saves. Uh, I was last in the league in batting average, and I got Arias and Yadi Diaz, the two batting champs. How am I last in the league hitting 192? It's like I don't get it. It's only it's only five six games, so that's gonna that's gonna change. That's gonna change. But wow, you know. Um, anyway. <laughs> We have Woo! one more super there from Chase Broberg. You got yep, it? There he is. I got it right here. The thoughts on Farhan developing arms and signing bats. Um, They're all short. That's the issue I have. It's all one-year deals. Because after this year, you don't know what you got. It's kind of... Yeah, I mean... It's you may have little... to redo this all over again. <laughs> Cliff Martinez. <laughs> Northern Lights is lucky Tommy Pham isn't in this league. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Be, Dan, you're be, getting slapped. <laughs> there'd be guys, guys throwing hands in the outfield. <laughs> oh, I don't know about I don't know. The, the his developing arms. I think the Giants have a pipeline of pitching that seems to be 
pretty good. And I think they drafted well this past year with, um, you know, um, what's the kid, Bryce uh, Eldridge. And then they got this kid, Walker Martin, in the second round, a shortstop out of Colorado high school player that many people thought should have been a first rounder. Um, And they got a lot of other shortstops. Maui Ahuna from Tennessee. A what kid you call from, me? They got Avison of Ortega. Uh, yeah, they got him, and they they picked up like four shortstops in this dra- last draft. So I'm thinking that long term, they don't see Luciano as their you know ten year shortstop. I think their plan is maybe even to get Casey Schmidt at. Uh, short for a year or two until some of these other guys develop or something. I don't know. I would move Luciano right now. If, if he's down in AAA, I would send him to AA, AAA, and just have him work in left field or right field. He's got a good arm. He looks to me more like a corner outfielder, kind of like a Solaire type. They're, they're still playing him at shortstop. He went two for yeah. five. Today. I mean, he's got a similar body if you look at him. Isn't he like – Six three, yeah, uh, six six two, guy. I think. But I mean, uh, Chase makes a point. But I, in some ways, I think the the arms have to come from everywhere. You have to keep developing arms mm-hmm. and signing arms. I mean, you're just always it's baseball. You're always going to need more arms. I don't know if signing bats is the way to go. I think drafting and developing bats is the way to go. Yes, I mean, th- let's be honest. I mean, they they drafted and developed Buster. They drafted and developed Crawford. They mm-hmm. drafted and developed Pablo. They drafted and developed Belt. Um, this is when they won three World Series. I, I really think that you're not going to be able to sign free agent hitters because they're always going to look at at um, the ballpark, and the ballpark's a huge negative. So you're always going to have to overpay. Mm-hmm. So you're either going to have to trade and develop an incredible arsenal of pitching and trade for hitters. Right. But if you look at it, teams are more reluctant to trade position player talent than ever. So I would say you gotta you gotta draft and develop your own Bobby Witt Jr. You know, you gotta find your own you gotta find your own position players. Uh, signing bats, you're gonna get some decent bats, but they got Chapman because of Melvin. Um Solaire has a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like the Solaire you know, type bat because he strikes out a lot. I think if you're really going to build your team for the future and have a world series team that could run with LA, you've got to find four or five position players in the amateur draft, draft them, develop them, bring them to the big leagues and have them succeed. I think that's, I think that's probably the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, you talk about Bobby Witt jr. Who has been the top you think about the top guys in the draft the last six seven years and the giants were (laughs) unfortunate i guess in 2018 to be drafting second in a year that wasn't that great casey mize went first to detroit then the giants selected joey bart and that if i don't know can you pull up that draft eric the top 10 draft of 2018 2018 baseball draft Yeah, pull that up just um but you know you look at other guys that have come across the the you know future years guys like jackson holiday and and oddly rutschman and bobby witt jr and all these guys are stars in the giants Mm -hmm. land joey bart and i mean it's like i can't i can't remember that draft in 18 was alex bone bone in that draft about to find out. Uh, Alec, Alec Bond. Yep. Is that the third pick? Okay. Um, not a great draft. Jonathan India. Kalenic. Well, Jonathan India is a, is a good player. He's a good player, but yeah. I mean, he's not a bad hitter, but it, it wasn't a, is the it wasn't a to, knockdown. Uh, you know, Kyler. Travis Swaggerty, I think, is already not on the Pirates anymore. Grayson Rodriguez, he's one of their good starters for Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, Logan Gilbert, player? great pitcher for the Mariners. Yeah. Where is the position player talent? Oh, Libertor went to high school right down the street from me here in Arizona. A lot of people like Nolan Gorman. 
Brady Singer's not bad for Kansas City. He's got some Larnack is Nico Horner. I mean, it just kind of shows how difficult it is. Tristan Tristan Cassis. Cassis, yeah. Yeah, there's um, no big time. Oh, guys Naylor, ah, nah, it wasn't a it wasn't a, a huge draft. I mean, probably the best player to go up to the top again was probably uh I mean Cassis looks like he'd be pretty good, but Bone is in India. India is um, probably the best. You know, I mean, he's isn't he have power yeah. and he plays second. But yeah, I mean well, it's you know, it's it's um the amateur draft is is hit and miss. You gotta be really good at it. Um <clears throat> You know, and it's funny. I always, you know, no, I've been, I, I've been so big on Giants prospects for so long that I've now got, you know, you know, I've got, I've got the battle scars. So it's like every one of the old prospects is bad, but we're supposed to believe that the next hyped prospect, like this Eldridge, is going to be awesome. You know what I mean? It's like how many times. How many times can you swing and miss in the amateur draft before the next guy that's coming down the pike, you know, we're not so enthralled by it. It's like we fall for the banana in the tailpipe every mm-hmm. single time. You know, it's like, you know, this guy's going to be great. Jerome Williams is going to be great. Kurt, you know, Jesse Foppert was on the cover of Baseball America. Kurt Ainsworth was going to be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary Brown was going to be fantastic. Uh, you know, Christian you name Arroyo. it. Don't, Christian Arroyo, Tony Torcado. I mean, it's like I mean, Rickard Fanida. Somebody says um, there's been so many guys and it's like, okay, they've all failed and the giants haven't developed a big time outfielder since Chili Davis. Mm-hmm. And yet Bryce Eldridge gets picked and it's like, everybody's like, well, Bryce Eldridge is going to be awesome. Well, why every single other Giants hitting prospect for the last 25 years has been shit, but this guy's now going to be awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, 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 I've lost my enthusiasm for the Bryce Eldridge's of the world and the Reggie Crawford's of the world, because I've seen giants prospects under multiple different regimes and they just, they just crap out. They, they even, they'll have big years in the Cal league. Sometimes they'll have big years in double a, but when it gets to triple a or the majors, it's like, these guys are all just, and eh, not any good. So I, 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 I love, I, you know, I love the enthusiasm, but there's no real reason that Bryce Eldridge should be good. You know, when you're looking at what the giants track record is of drafting, hitting prospects in the, in the, out of the amateur draft, he might be good, but if he is, he will be the exception, not the rule. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what? Uh, I don't know how much longer you guys want to go. It's been a couple hours. I think. I mean, we got. Yeah, a lot I, I got to jump them, because but, I've uh, got a morning stream. Yeah, I, I got to ask you a question, Larry. This is not baseball related. Um, you got a. Uh, I, I don't want to literally, but you got a gun to your head here. What's going to happen with IU? Is he going to get traded, or the Gi- are the Niners going to sign him? I think he's going to get traded. And and here's why. The 49ers are on the verge of owing their quarterback almost 40 50 million. times what yeah. they're paying him right now. Right. 50 times. He's making a million bucks. He's going to be making close to 50 million. That means $50 million worth of players are going to have to come off their cap in the next year or so. Mm. So I don't think they want to spend you know, $60 million a year on receivers. So the story today that they're interested in Tyler Boyd and that they, you know, may trade a I, I, I think that's, what's going to happen. I think the Niners Tyler are Boyd smart. with the, the, I mean the Bengals receiver. Yeah. The Bengals receiver, they're interested in him, but they're also maybe talking about drafting a receiver. I just think that they're going to look at, you know, they're so far apart on, uh, on numbers. Uh, they're saying all the right things, but they're also, I think, preparing for a, you know, a pivot. And I think that they're going to wait until, you know, till draft day. And my guess is that they're going to get a mid first round pick offer, which is a very high offer for IUK. And I think they're going to sign a 
Tyler Boyd type receiver and draft somebody else and, and go down that road. Are, are they better off um, letting Ayuk just play out the fifth year and then tag, franchise, tag, franchise tag him for the sixth year and let Debo walk? Because after next year, Debo's cap hit's not that bad. It's funny. We're talking about this, and there's lots of different options they can do, but I actually think they're going to have to do both. I think they're going to have to wind up trading off of Ayuk and letting Debo walk at the end of the year. People are talking about like it's if it's an either or situation, but I, I think it's going to be you know both. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, they're going to definitely have to draft some receivers. I'm. I mean, it would be great if somehow they can. Uh, you know, the talk is what Pittsburgh at twenty, uh, and then and then move up from there get 20 and then maybe uh, get somehow maybe get Malik neighbors or. Uh, uh, well, I don't think you can get him at 20, but I mean, no, you have to move up. You have to move up to top 10 probably. Right. Yeah. About and 10, I don't 12. know that Ayuk's going to fetch that, but I think Ayuk might fetch like a 20th pick or a 17th pick or something like that. Right. And you might be able to get uh, an maybe offensive get tackle, tackle you there and then be able to the get receiver another receiver. Um, you know, so I, yeah, I, you know, I, if you said, what are they're going to have to get creative with their cap and they're going to, they want to say all the right things. It does nobody any service to run your players down in the media. So you say, Hey, we love the guy. He's an essential part of what we do. And then when push comes to shove, um, when the negotiations get really, really tough, I think you say, Hey, we just couldn't afford him." Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what they're going to do. I really, well, do. uh, well, good. Well, I guess I'll be seeing. We're, we're on for Friday night, right after uh, Warriors, and and uh, we're doing the end. The yeah, we'll situation. do a little. We'll do a little Friday night stream. Yeah, Maybe a little, doing, a little everything. A little. I think we got Brian Katz again and my brother. Yeah, uh, yeah. Set up and Rye and, oh, nice. and Red. Yeah, yeah. Well, fire, that'll be great. Fire, hey, fire. everybody. Uh, you know, I'm, I I know most people here watching are probably on Larry's channel. If you're uh, new to NorCal sports, uh, Larry and I are uh, teaming up here tonight on both channels. If you want to do, if you if you're a Giants fan, um, I'm doing uh, Eric and I, and I've got a couple other guys, uh, Los D and um, Bora at times, and we also bring in Marty Lurie occasionally, and um, Ned will join us and. We've had some actual Giants players coming up. I've actually got – I've reached out to the Baltimore Orioles to have their director of uh, player development join us. It's my best friend growing up. His son is the has gotten the job this year as player uh, – as director of player development for the Orioles. And um, he should be joining us. Uh, the Orioles uh, – we should be connecting on that. So – we do a lot of baseball coverage, probably more than anybody out there on YouTube. Uh, we do in-depth Giants coverage. So join NorCal Sports Network, if you would. I appreciate Larry, uh, you know. Uh, Absolutely. Everybody who's a member of the Krug Show, sign up over here on Danny's channel. He does a lot of great baseball stuff. Yeah, if you sign up, it's free. You get an alert every time he goes live. and. Um, and let's get Dan to, you know, 20,000 subs by the end of the season. And NorCal Sports Network. Yeah, it's right there at the top. You see it up there. Appreciate you, Larry. Uh, be, uh, it's always great to have you on. And uh, um, we got one last super here from Nick. Yep, there he oh, is. Yeah. Nick. Says, Am I the only Giants fan tired of getting smacked around by the Dodgers? Everyone else is so excited for 84 wins and a Manford wild card. What a joke. Get Not serious. Not. I'm with you, Nick. I'm with yeah. you, but uh, you got to walk before you can run. Yep. All right, guys. We'll be back tomorrow night after the Giants-Dodgers game, probably about 945 to 1015 range. Sign up. NorCal Sports Network. You'll get the alert when we go live. And we're here after every Giants ball game. For Larry Kruger and Eric, Dan Cochimilio saying have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks, everybody.